guys. Happy Saturday. It's nice to see everyone. Excited to be here. I feel feel great today, actually. <laughs> like I'm like I'm real happy to be here. I had to work. <laughs> Not me. I I feel like I don't work anymore. I'm just always home. Laura's been waiting off for a much all stream. week. <laughs> waiting for the live stream. Okay, let's see who's in chat today. We've got Piper John. It looks like this may have been yesterday. It was very early. Jeff Castle, thanks for being our, our new channel member. I appreciate it. Appreciate that, Jeff. Delan's here. Dave Vogel saying, Sugar Kitty, Gandy Road, good evening. I'm glad you like your sticker. Um, who else do we have? Everyone's just so friendly. Lots of lots of highs and cheers and drinking good stuff. Traverse City Wheat Whiskey Barrel Proof. That sounds pretty good. Have we had that? Uh, I, we had something we, from we've, them. We've and had it was Traverse good. City, not wheat, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Let's see Rusty here. Bourbon Syndicate, Rusty's here. Um Piper John is back again today. <laughs> Yesterday <laughs> and today at the same time. <laughs> um buffalo bourbon enthusiast cheers cheers to you um scrolling you guys are talkative asmr whiskey your name stood out because you weren't a wrench now you're a wrench and you'll blend in with everyone else you're all <laughs> <laughs> different color all everyone's blue here um gt mustang oh i just scrolled right over that gt mustang 09 is here and Jeffrey Wack. Hello again, whiskey friends. Hey, congrats on 2K there, Jeffrey. It's very exciting. Um, Jeff Castle. Mark Gale. Nice to see you. Beach Sand Bourbon. Who else we got? Bourbon Baller Lee. Cheers, Cheers from Lee. CT's Connecticut. 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 <laughs> I know my abbreviations quite well. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> Barrel Dave, cheers. Cheers, Dave. We've been missing you the past stream or two. Yeah, I like bourbon a lot. Cheers to you. Um... I like bourbon a lot. Send us an email. I need your address for your trash palette sticker from your super chat last week. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we I feel like we had it at some point, but we don't have it anymore. So send us an email. Bourbon school. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Tipsy whiskey shenanigans. You stand out because apparently you're not a wrench either. <laughs> um, are we caught up? Scrolling. We're real close to the bottom, I think. Well, I'm enjoying this drink. Scrolling, and that's it. Everyone, cheers. Yes. We're we are enjoying. I made a, it's like a tequila sunrise with bourbon, and it tastes way better than a tequila sunrise. It's a so. bourbon sunrise, <laughs> and it's fantastic. So, thanks again for coming, everybody. We got 20 of you here right now. Um, I don't know if you saw in the intro video, we've got a, a giveaway tonight for Super Chats. $5 Super Chats gets you entered. It's a Booker's Flight. Uh, 20... Here, it's three of, it's the third one of 21, the first one of 22, the first one of 23, and the fourth one of 23. So, uh, two bunch ounce, of random ones. Yep, two ounce <laughs> pours, $5 Super Chats. But in addition to your $5 Super Chat, you also get the extra large trash pallet sticker. Just email us and let us know your address so I can send that to you. There's a couple from last week that we still have to get out that I don't have uh, contact information for. Yes, so that that to the side. Keith P, I think that was his name. If you're in, in the chat, Keith uh, P from email Louisiana. Us. I know the state. I just don't know where at in the state. <laughs> also, we've got our standard two free giveaways. We'll put buzzwords in the chat later on. Uh, four two ounce samples in each one from our private collection. We'll get those uh, drawn up later and we'll see who wins those. I'm rushing through this because we've got an exciting show tonight. That Aren't is, they all exciting? I feel like they all are. This one is like months <laughs> in, in the making. So our guest tonight, we had a show scheduled with him probably six months ago. <laughs> and for whatever reason, it, 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 it fell through and we rescheduled. And then literally two nights before that, that rescheduled show, we dropped and broke our camera. 
So now we, we have had, a camera. So we had to cancel and you know we we kicked around a couple other dates and finally agreed on one. And it's here. Let's bring him out. Let's bring out Stephen from Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing? Hey, we're doing, doing great. great. How are you? The one bright side about your guys' camera breaking, you got an excuse to upgrade. Okay. It wasn't all horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's How's the same one we tonight? had before. Oh, oh well. <laughs> and now we just then. have two of them because we fixed the other one. Got a new lens. Oh, for really? It. New, now we have new, two cameras. New lens. <laughs> I took the body apart, straightened it out, put it all back together, and it works. After a factory reset or two, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I didn't know that. That's that's exciting. I didn't think uh, you could straighten out a lens, but you know. Hey, well, two no, we got a angles. new lens. We got a new lens, yeah, and the body was new lens. Or, the yeah, body sorry, but... was. Yeah. sensor the body was <laughs> like like you were saying backstage it feels kind of plastically it's very yeah. thin aluminum and it took an incredible amount of damage with its short little fall and i just kind of straightened it all out real gingerly and it's working well that's awesome <laughs> yeah i i use the same camera the uh or the same camera style i just have like the 6600 right now and i just bought the 6700 today uh, not that anyone cares about that because we're here to drink whiskey, but that's another one of my obsessions or whatever you want to call it nowadays. <laughs> yeah. So, we all have lots of hobbies. So, so, so speaking of drinking whiskey, what are you drinking? I'm starting the night out with some just simple classic uh, Del Bach here. Let's see if I can. It's probably way overexposed, but uh, Del Bach classic. This is just a local Arizona malt. This is the closest one to me. Cause I can grab it from the shelf. So that's why I grabbed it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing special. I'm, I'm pretty sure when we did uh, our regional sample swap before, um, there was a lot of their stuff Bach. in it. Yeah. yeah I, and, and we really did like that. Them and the one I used to be the distiller for, those are like my only two, like go to whiskeys or go to Arizona whiskey producers. The other ones are kind of, so I basically probably only sent you them and the one I work for. <laughs> I think so. I, I yeah. think you did. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Knowing me. And, and Jeffrey Wack cares about your camera stuff. He's a novice. So he okay. likes the information. Jeff, hit me and, up. I got you. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say thanks to Rusty for the uh, super chat. And hello, Rebecca Boyle and Whiskey Bank. And I'm caught up again. Okay. okay. So, Stephen, why don't you take a minute to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what led you to start a YouTube channel? Ah, um, so I guess we'll bring it back to kind of the inception of everything. Um, I got back from a deployment, met a really close friend there, and he got this job because uh, I'm... I know there's not a ton of us, but I'm kind of one of the younger whiskey YouTubers. I'm only 26. And when I started this, what that was like, oh, what 2021. So we're on 2024. So I've been doing this for about three years. So, you know, 23, 22 is when I got into whiskey, which was at a horrible time because that's right when things got ridiculously difficult to find and expensive out of nowhere wonder why <laughs> uh, but but yeah I, I found a friend he kind of got me into whiskey really really heavily and then I just kind of became I, I'm one of those obsessive people when I find hobbies I go a little bit too hard in the paint when maybe it's like hey we should dial this back chief maybe you don't need to buy <laughs> 200 some bottles of whiskey but like you know neither here nor there I ended up doing that and then at some point I probably like a uh, six months into it, I just kind of started making videos of it because I've always been into cameras and then I watched a lot of YouTube videos and then I just kind of like, I could do that. I could do that. And I don't know what possessed me to like actually start doing it, but then I actually started doing it. And then ever since then I've been making content and things have kind of changed coming went uh at some point i was doing distillery content which was probably my favorite personally because it was really difficult uh or different uh it was exciting compared to a lot of the stuff we 
can produce easily as you know content creators but you know it was it was challenging and i like that and uh i'm no longer doing that no longer have the access to be doing that uh but you know it was fun while it lasted and now i'm kind of in this weird phase of where i'm addicted to mgp whiskey i don't know why don't know where that <laughs> came from but that's kind of i feel like half of the videos i've been doing recently uh because i just pick a topic and i look around my room and i'm like all right where are we going with this uh a lot of it's been MGP, like Barrel, Doc Swenson's, like that's, I'm just vibing with those right now. Why? I don't know. But, you know, that's the whiskey journey. Because three years ago, I've been like, eh, you could do better than that. Like, let's get some, you know, Heaven Hill or something like that. So things come and go. I used to love Wild Turkey. Not so much anymore. Not my jam. At least like the 101. I don't know. Yeah. Things change. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's. A, a different but similar story to ours um i mean we definitely are way too obsessive with our hobbies that is uh, we is agree so. with that i i mean <laughs> like everything we get into it's it's a little bit too ex extreme yeah like like, like pre-covid we were into disc golf and you know we went to tournaments every weekend and oh you had those backpacks with like the different yeah. grades oh, of yeah. discs like i've oh, never yeah. understood okay. that <laughs> no, they, they do different things they go different distances they they, they fly different straight weights, or different they go distances. left or they go right or oh yeah, yeah they man. do all kinds of yep covid hit disc golf courses shut down we dove we, we jumped out of that and dove into whiskey and you know <laughs> here, here we are today so with way too many bottles of whiskey <laughs> what made you guys like can you guys because you guys are a little bit newer than me uh because at this point i've like brain dumped when or why i started creating and like what possessed you guys or made you decide hey i want to start creating content i think it was because we watched it and then i was like well i i could do that i yeah. could do that that looks fun I okay that's so it, it started, we, we were watching, do you know who Anders Ericsson is? He, he does a lot of uh, cocktails, like classic cocktails on YouTube. He's a bartender. Started watching him doing classic cocktails. And then, you know, you leave the video going and it auto plays something else. And it's, it mm -hmm. auto played a bourbon junkies video. Oh, okay. They're, talk, they're talking about whiskey and I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. Maybe tomorrow I'll go to the liquor store. You know, because we had just done cocktails and stuff like that, mixed drinks before. So I picked up a bottle of Woodford Reserve. It was my first bourbon. And uh, we took the deep dive into it. Our collection grew pretty quick to probably 150 bottles. Mm -hmm. And we're like, man, we've got a bunch of great bottles. We could probably do this too. And we, we joked about it mostly. One day I came home from work and Laura's like, hey, I did something. Actually, I did it like a month ago. And she had started the channel, posted videos. <laughs> and for the first, you know, six months of the channel, it was all just Laura. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, we hit 500 subscribers and I did a celebration video with her. And then I've been on ever since. Okay. Wow, that's, that's exciting. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> do you... I know this is technically your channel, but now I'm stealing all the questions. Uh, oh, we, we love it. As far as your Absolutely. whiskey collection goes, because I know you guys said you have a lot of good bottles and your collection grew kind of rapidly. Um, I've realized like looking at in, in throughout this whole process, looking at other people's collections and stuff. Mine's very like I have a lot of bottles. I have a lot of variations. I like that a lot, um, but like I don't have all the bougie fancy bottles that are real expensive and real allocated because that's just outside of my means and my effort. Cause quite frankly, I don't really go hunting anymore. I don't have the energy or patience to do that. So, uh, you know, I don't have any of that and I see how that reflects it into like kind of, I feel like my videos are very much so in the realm of they go towards maybe not necessarily your everyday bourbon enthusiast but it's more of like a reachable target where like i don't review allocated stuff because i just don't have it not because i i would love the views from reviewing nothing but allocated stuff but like that's just not in me so like what what's your guys's collection look like because you guys don't have it behind you so i can't no, snoop <laughs> yeah so um we, we've got 
plenty of the the allocated or the tater bottles you know mm -hmm. i i think that's like everybody's natural progression when they start is they they go oh, out yeah. and they chase all these bottles that all these channels are talking about you know so all of the buffalo trace stuff and you know just pretty much every fancy bottle you can think of we chase we don't own them all we we own we own a, a good amount of them but we've really transitioned out of those because we don't like to hunt either we don't like mm -hmm. to buy whiskey in washington state where we live actually because the the prices are ridiculously high and there's a 20 and a half percent tax on top of those high prices Ooh. so oh we, <laughs> this is jump, ridiculous <laughs> yeah so we jump across no. the river into oregon and we hunt in oregon mostly where it's state controlled so okay. they have a, a they have a much more limited quantity of those types of bottles um so we've kind of transitioned into a lot of single barrels that's that's our our focus now is we're looking for these unique expressions uh mm -hmm. you mentioned you're you're an mgp guy we absolutely love the mgp in that eight to nine year range and oh, yeah. uh 100 <laughs> percent. So, so so that's the bulk of the bottles we buy nowadays are are going to be single barrels we've um, been buying a lot of local stuff too yeah really. we're getting so, into a lot of more of the regional stuff that's that's out of the pacific northwest and and we honestly we love a lot of single malts yeah well that's <laughs> the pacific northwest is real good yeah. for that like see, single malts my my two favorite regions for single malts pacific northwest and uh oh man why am i having a hard time saying this uh southwest yeah mm -hmm. southwest so so basically the west because you know northwest and then southwest those are like the two favorite places like texas arizona for single malts because you know del bach is probably one of the best american single malt producers uh they just happen to be in the same state i am in which i'm very fortunate for that and then you guys got like uh you know bull run which love this one uh <laughs> that just their standard six-year-old i think that's six mm -hmm. years old yeah six years old and then you know westward uh, yeah westward oh, westward westland mm. <laughs> yeah so good so good fantastic <laughs> there there's a there's a new up-and-comer out of seattle called copper works that you got to check out they have sent me some stuff and i reviewed it i liked it uh they're in that phase where they just need to age out a little bit more because they're charging like you know 70 80 90 dollars for a whiskey that i would happily pay 50 bucks for but it's craft so it's like it's like right on that verge of like i want to buy it but i also don't at the same time because i think it's just a smidge overpriced but you know it's as I can't wait to see them age up. <laughs> yes, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, so in in a couple of years, that stuff's going to be phenomenal. Um, yes. And, and they're so small, it's going to be hard to get. Well, probably not for us to just <clears throat> go up there. You can yeah, buy well, it online, <laughs> though, because I, I think their stuff allows you to buy it online. I don't know if you could ship out of state, though, because that legally becomes a problem real quick. Gotcha. So... The, the first video I ever saw of yours, it, it's kind of a, a fun one. Um, it was called Stop Buying Budget Bourbon. Oh, I've had a so, lot of opinions. I have completely, wh where did I go with this video? Because sometimes so I, I also label things like misleading-ish. No, you yeah, you went kind of you went full long. send on this. I actually oh, yes, I love that for me. Broke your I, I I got your video. I broke it down into like just the highlights. We're gonna play a clip real quick. Oh God, I it's it's good though. <laughs> I'm here. We okay. are getting into why you need to stop buying so much budget bourbon. It can get to a point where it's too much. Once you've had one. You've had them all. You need to diversify your portfolio. You need more different products. You know, you need to spend more than $30 on a bottle of whiskey to get more out of it. Quality over quantity. So you need to kind of spend a little bit more money. Yes, you're gonna have less whiskey, but you're gonna have overall better whiskey. Whatever for you is kind of that peak of your value. For me, it's like the 60 to 80 range. I think that's the best value in the bourbon market for price to quality ratio. So 
you make a ton of great points in there, but what I really want to know is how much hate did you catch for that video? I don't know if I can answer that because I kind of stopped. So first of all, <laughs> I need to say one thing. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about that mustache. Please, I swear <laughs> to God, if I ever start. So um, <laughs> to explain the mustache away to everybody, my ex-wife uh, recently divorced. That's kind of why it took us a while to get this thing started because the first one that kind of made that all fall apart. Uh, that being said, uh, my ex-wife, we were about to get married and she was like, I'm, I'm bald. I started balding at like 25. I don't know why it sucks. I hate it, but it is what it is. So I just kind of full sent it, went bald and she was like, you need facial hair. I'm an army reserve drill sergeant. So I have to shave at least once a month and uh they let you grow out this creepy ass pedo mustache uh <laughs> instead so i was like all right well like the, this is like a compromise like i'll make it work and she was like hey i like it looking back no no <laughs> never i will happily be baby faced for like a week out of a month because i just no um but yeah that's neither here nor there uh but as far as like hate wise goes which by the way i still stand on that uh, all my opinions of that video uh the only thing that's maybe changed a little bit is my price range i'm more in the 60 dollar range right now because i'm really not trying to get bougie with anything like 50 to 60 dollars is what I'm spending on whiskey because I'm just, I'm not drinking a lot of fancy stuff right now. Cause that's kind of where I'm at. But, uh, I stopped caring. I think six months down the road, I wasn't even a thousand subscribers. Cause I don't think I hit a thousand until like year one or year 1.5. Like it took that first a thousand, that first a hundred, I think took six months for me to get like it took a long long time and i think um i reached out i sent some stuff to like a facebook group that's local with some of my uh friends in it and all and i was like hey like give me some pointers and like a lot of people just talked so much trash and you know like the production value wasn't as good i didn't know a lot about cameras at the time for filming wise didn't know lighting all that jazz but like there, there was there was a lot of hate and like that kind of killed me a little bit and then I stopped doing it for a little bit uh, as far as like a week or two and then at some point I just kind of realized I was like F it like who cares who cares I was like I think at the time I had somewhere around like 100 subscribers and I was like the 100 people like this and I was like so then I just started ignoring comments. I reply to the good comments. I heart every comment. So if you say something shitty and I just heart it, it's because like, I, I'm not going to argue with you in the chats. I do have some followers like uh hanging AZ who, uh, he'll clap back at people for me, but like, I, I just, <laughs> I don't care. I like, I'm just a dude sitting in front of a camera who has a ton of freaking opinions as like you guys are basically the same. Like you, you're just two people sitting in front of a camera who has opinions about whiskey and sharing those opinions. Like if you don't like it, man. Like that's okay. You don't have to like it. I'm not going to argue with you in the exactly. comments. I don't care anymore. <laughs> so, but yeah, I probably, I probably caught a lot of flack for that because I don't know. Uh, there's probably some alcoholics who have a problem with, you know, not being able to, stop buying whiskey constantly that's super duper cheap i don't know like the gist of it was basically just like hey like there's better things out there for like you know a little bit more money like maybe try that out yeah, yeah. we're creating yeah, a, a video it, yeah. this week it'll come out but spoiler same, alert same idea <laughs> yes i love this i need to start getting <laughs> oh man that just that reinvigorated me to like ah uh, I want to get controversial again. I haven't made a controversial video in a minute. Ooh, I'm excited. Whew. Yes, let's do this. Yeah. Oh, yes. I love those controversial videos. Do you guys get a lot of heat on any of your videos? And do you Not care? Not usually. So we we don't really care. I mean, any any interaction towards the algorithm treats as people are like interacting with your video and, and it just pushes it further. So, so we love that. Um, a lot of comments I, I don't really understand like well like you said we give our opinion on something and yeah. then people have to like hardcore defend like we're we're telling them they're wrong for for liking something different it's not like that at all it's just like you said we're we're two people sitting here drinking whiskey and sharing our thoughts on it 
and this is also subjective tastes something different when they put whiskey in their mouth you know i think the majority of the like really bad comments we've had were on shorts and we haven't been doing those because it just takes more time so we haven't been doing them and i think it goes to people that don't like aren't into whiskey so much and so then they're like well, you're not hot enough or show me your boobs or like yeah. weird stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I want to do shorts. <laughs> I'm not judging because, you know, there's, there is a decent amount of my time that I spend watching shorts. So like, I understand not a decent amount of time, but like sometimes you just find yourself like scrolling, you know, shorts okay. or uh, Instagram reels, TikTok. They're, it's all the same in my opinion, but like kind of short form content. I don't see how that model applies very well to this style or like uh, I don't know, industry, whatever you want to call it, like whiskey YouTube. I just don't see how shorts works with that because it's all for like quick, tight things. And I just have I'm I'm a long winded person. I have too much to say that's not going to fit into 15 seconds. So all the 15, like all the shorts I've ever done are like really like, it's just B-roll stuff. Like it's not, it's not fun. It's not exciting or it's a dumb voiceover. It's like, do you know what the next best whiskey is? And then you show the whiskey and it's like, scroll to the next one now. Have a nice day. I don't know. That stuff's just not it. One as a producer, it's not exciting to produce because the, what I enjoy is to share my opinions. You know, like I, I don't really care about trying to do fun, fancy edits and all. And my personality is a majority of it. Like that's all that really separates opinions and personalities. So I don't yeah. think that translates to shorts. Yeah. So, so back before your, your hiatus, you had like a very legit short game. Like you had some good, ones. The, the shorts you put out were some of my absolute favorites. Um, oh yeah, in, I did. In, I did in the month where I tried that. Yeah. We, yeah, we actually have we a have we have oh. a clip of one of your shorts. Yeah. We're gonna play real quick. I love that. It's oh. Man, I got all the flavor bitches say I'm delicious. I'ma have all you motherfuckers lay in a ditch. I'ma kill all you rappers. I'ma aim with precision. They was rocking with your ass till they made a decision. All my friends making millions because they know I'm a bitch. <laughs> like one of my absolute favorites you've done. That <laughs> took me like six hours to make. It took way too long. And uh, again, like what you said, it's like for some reason, it's a 15, 10 second video. Oh God, that's rough. I'm I'm watching it on YouTube right here. And there's, you know how there's a delay. So, so I have two monitors. Oh God. Uh. But yeah. I love like, how every time the bottle moves, like the liquid's even shaking and... Yeah. It, yeah. It, it was uh, that was like take number four, <laughs> like stacked into another thing. So I tried. Any plans? <laughs> yeah. Any plans to do shorts again? Because, like I said, your shorts are great. Um, if you want to spend that time, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm in, th I'm doing things. I've been doing things that I never thought I would be doing. Like I never thought I would be doing this YouTube channel. Like I didn't think the YouTube channel would be where it's at. Like I, I don't know. It's really hard to say like, I'm never going to do something ever again. That being said, I don't actively currently plan on getting back into shorts, but like never say never to quote Justin Bieber, right? That's Justin Bieber, I think. <laughs> but sure. it's it's I what heard the what, song I know. It's a yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. But like, yeah, <laughs> like there's I don't know, like you're not doing shorts. Are you ever gonna do shorts again? Maybe. Where Maybe. is the gonna take know. you? <laughs> I, ours arguably weren't as good as yours. <laughs> Oh, we had some good They didn't ones, perform but, super know. well. And they also didn't yeah. translate well to, like what I said, I'm passionate about like the 10 minute videos, like eight, 10 minute videos. Like that's kind of where I live in and what I like to enjoy because I think I can competently deliver whatever I'm trying to deliver in a message throughout that timeline. So like that's that's what I'm passionate about. And I feel like the shorts didn't translate to that. Like, Sometimes they kicked off and they did really well and I got quite a few subscribers for it. But then like those subscribers would also like leave over time. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. 
I don't think it directly translated. We'd put out a short that would get like a couple thousand views real quick and we'd gain like 10 subscribers. And then like the next time we posted a, a long form video, eight of those subscribers would bail. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you post, but if you post like an eight, 10 minute video, that's like kind of your typical style. Uh, and you, it gets like three or four K like you get quite a bit more subscribers for one typically. Uh, yeah. and usually they're the subscribers that stick around. Usually you lose some, you gain some. That's how the game goes. It, it's a yo-yo. What's this black whiskey everyone's talking about in the chat? We we had that a few live streams ago. It's oh, okay. the the Andean black corn. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was good. It was really, really good. Uh, black sand, corn. I've no, never heard of black corn. Yeah, so so Dave Vogel saying he's sent you samples in the past as well, or gifted you samples. Um, oh, yeah. Dave has sent me a lot. Dave's amazing. He's yeah. He's super generous. Yeah, so we got a sample of that from him, and then we got a, another sample of it from John. Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, Piper John out of Florida, and we drank it on a live stream. I don't know, maybe a month ago, and man, it was so good. It, it like last year, the New York Spirits competition at one best in show. Mm -hmm. So it's it's legit good. Um, not not a bourbon because it's it's from another country but you know it, okay it meets all those same requirements i do believe okay i mean i would also say corn whiskey in general is kind of an underrated category because there's a lot of at least southwest wise there's a lot of texas whiskeys that are 100 percent corn and man the things you can do with different kinds of corn it's like bloody butcher heirloom corn blue corn yellow corn like it's a huge change. I was say, what's what's the Balcona's one that we like real well? Is that true blue? Blue corn? Yeah, that would be blue. I, I think it's blue corn, yeah. That one's pretty good. Yeah, and uh, Iron Root does a lot with the Bloody Butcher, which is basically like a native red corn, I think, off the top of my head. I could be wrong. I kind of, like, I share a lot of opinions without a lot of information. I don't do a lot of research. <laughs> my my co-host for the live streams, he does all of our research. And I kind of just like be like, hey, bro, spit the facts. I'll share my opinions. Um, yeah. Um, but but yeah. bloody, I'm a, I'm a gardener. I'm like, oh. that's another one of my hobbies yes. that I do. Send like, it. Way hardcore. <laughs> and uh, bloody butcher is a is a red corn. Um, like uh, it's yes. popcorn, actually. Yeah. I love being right. Nothing better. And, and than that, that was a great segue, Stephen. I was going to oh, ask God. you after your your hiatus, <laughs> you you came back and there's another face on your live streams. What's? Can you, yeah. Can you so speak to that? the YouTube channel originally started out with me and my friend Alec just producing content, and then he ended up moving down to two. He moved away, uh, and he got his wife pregnant and so then he kind of like it was like a hey i'm gonna be on every once in a while and then it was like hey i'm i'm not gonna be able to show up moving forward like understandably obviously take care of your family but uh after that it was a while of me doing it by myself and i'll be honest don't like live streaming solo uh because then it's like you just reading chat and i feel like i talk too much because i get when i'm nervous i talk a lot i mean i talk a lot in general but like when i get real nervous and no one's talking i gotta fill the dead air and that doesn't work when you're just talking at a camera and reading people's comments. So I, I didn't really enjoy it, but it was something that I was doing. So I just kept doing it. And then uh, I met Jordan uh, at the distillery because he came in for a tour. Actually, he came in on my first tour, which was a total shit show because I did not know how to run tour. Uh, but somehow we connected and we just kept hanging out, drinking whiskey and then uh, at one point I was like, Hey bro, you want to come on the live stream just to like, check it out, see if you want to do it. And, uh, he, after we finished the first one he did, he's like, bro, I'm in, I'm in, I'll be here every week. So that's since nice. then he's been on and that's been the last like two, three months, something somewhere around there since the new year, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had kind uh -huh. of disappeared off of, off of YouTube mm -hmm. for a, a couple months towards the end of 2023. Yeah, about um, five, six months ago. Yeah, you, you came back and I, I think I heard you said you went overseas and, and did some other stuff. Can you can you speak mm -hmm. to any of that or is that something you want to let go? Uh, I mean, uh, so I, I just went to Japan for my sister's wedding. Uh, but like the main reason was just because 
went through a divorce, uh, kind of didn't have time to produce content for one. And then for two, uh, wasn't super motivated to do it. And I also went through a job transition because I was also working full time at the distillery, which was like taking up way too much of my time. And then that's why I'm no longer producing distillery content. I'm still a brand ambassador for the distillery. I still love them. Um, and I still like do tours and whatnot all the time, but like not all the time, occasionally. Uh, but like I had to, I had to take a step back because it was just taking up too much of my time because, you know, sure. uh, running a craft distillery is a lot of work. And when it's a three man operation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> yeah, I actually loved some of the, the vlogging you did from the distillery where mm -hmm. you were, you know, just showing the day to day stuff. And then you guys had a breakdown and, and showed, you know, the broken parts and what that was all about and some of your workaround stuff. It was super cool. Um, content yeah. wise yeah and you know we're always I'm kind of so disappointed that stuff anyways yeah yeah I'm real disappointed for like there's a few things like one uh people didn't seemingly watch it as much which makes sense because the algorithm's all like it's tilted to people just you know like rapid lists things of that nature like that's why TikToks do really well uh numbers wise at least but like the thing that i'm kind of disappointed at is like i'm just disappointed that like i can't do it anymore now because especially like right now i would love to do that kind of stuff but it's just again not practical for my life but oh man they, they were fun while it lasted because it was one it was a big learning experience and now i understand the industry significantly better and the amount of work and labor it takes to put like to create it uh and two i have a different perspective than a lot of other whiskey consumers as well because you know i've been there done that and three i loved kind of trying out videography vlogging stuff like man oh if i had a zve 10 like you guys had that would have been great because that that <laughs> stabilization given there is a huge crop factor but Man, the stabilization's real good. Much better than mine. <laughs> comment from Sugar Kitty is funny. I thought it was fun to see the high tech way you do the cuts of the distillery. Yeah, yeah everything high tech. The, the buckets, the <laughs> yeah, the buckets. <laughs> dip it yeah. in, <laughs> taste it. <laughs> it's it's all you just got to do it by taste. Like there's there's no right way to. I mean, I'm sure there you can probably science the heck out of making whiskey, but there's just not enough money in it to science the heck out of it. So it's like, Hey, we just got to go by feel and by feel in this industry is with your tongue. It is what <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm sure even large distilleries, that's how they do it. I mean, they probably have better receptacles for doing cuts, but we have sterilized buckets and that's what, we, look, it's what we got. Okay. It's what we yeah. got home Depot. With they're world cheap. <laughs> and I like that about them. <laughs> Yeah, when we toured the Woodenville Distillery uh, a few weeks ago, uh, they were showing us where they do their cuts and how they do them and whatnot. And and they basically told us that the larger distilleries don't actually do cuts. They just their their runs all the time. Their yield is so massive that it just runs continuous, and they put everything oh. in it, and it just equals out over volume. Oh, like they, they don't cut anything. They just distill everything. So they, they collect their, their heads and tails. Yep. Full send. That's, that's what it, they said. I don't, I mean, I haven't been to those big distilleries to ask them, but uh, that's what I would like. I mean, they probably know more than I do, but it, it also depends on what your tour guide is. Cause you know, sometimes they're not the most competent people who actually have the background knowledge and they're just yeah. kind of who's there. Well, who was the, so, they used to, the guy that died. Yeah. That so, used to... so their, their master distiller originally was Dave Pickerel and he's mm -hmm, yeah. all the, all the teaching and stuff. But so he probably told, <clears throat> told them. If that you stuff? watch a video of like, say Buffalo trace and you see, I, I don't know what it's called, but the little glass barrel where the distillates coming out after the, the, the first run or whatever the, mm -hmm. it, it's just pouring. It is like a constant just flow. And they say that runs that way 24 seven. Huh? I, I haven't toured enough big distilleries to like have a background. I would, Hmm. My internal brain wants to say like, how is that possible? 
because things are going <laughs> to like, if you're collecting a hundred percent of everything, a hundred percent of the time, you're going to get a hundred percent of everything. So thus you're going to get a hundred percent of the shitty things that are going to ruin your whiskey. Like the, the concentration is the same, no matter what. So I feel like you have to do the cuts at some point. Like maybe they're just not making cuts, but they're actually like shifting. So they're not, maybe they're not collecting yeah, a wide yeah. amount of cuts, but they're kind of like, Hey, like maybe there's like a valve where it's like dump, send, dump, send, dump, send. And that's just kind of how they do it. I, I'd be curious. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I want, I want to know more. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know, infinitely more than I know. And you know, cause there's certain probably, things uh... in there that are super toxic for you. I mean, like alcohol is toxic in general, but there is like a lot of toxic stuff in there that people should not be putting in their bodies so i've oh yeah like the heads I mean, the heads isn't is the, dangerous isn't the cure for it is to drink like good alcohol though so like if it's mixed together maybe it's okay yeah so yeah, like, jack daniels I mean, yeah, is good go... alcohol they're ginormous so they have to be yeah. doing cuts it's they it's have the to. methanol that's the bad stuff right I, yeah methanol is methanol is bad uh phosphates so there's other there's a i mean but, i'm not really the chemist but yeah there's a lot of toxic stuff <laughs> yeah but but what he was saying in a distillery the size of woodenville even they have to do it because their volume isn't enough to dilute the bad but in something that that's doing like buffalo trace numbers it, it's just diluted out is what he said and and i don't know the accuracy they're not i'm just repeating i'm a parrot yeah i'd be uh, I would love to pick this dude's brain because again, that just doesn't make any sense. Like how could you dilute it if you're collecting hundred percent of everything, hundred percent of the time, you know, right. like r run that math equation out. <laughs> you can't dilute things. If you collect all of it constantly, that's just all of it. So you have a hundred percent of the bad stuff still, right? Guys, am I going crazy here? Yes. <laughs> I think that's what he was saying though, that it's like the bad stuff's in there. It's just, there's a lot more of the good stuff because they're bigger batches so I, the hearts is bigger or something i don't know sugar kitties comment in scotland they do it just like you described with the switch yeah okay. um it was uh they were much more technical about it when we went to westward they had their little like chemistry sets out i don't know what they were checking but they were some kind of numbers had to be and then they knew they were in the well, hearts well, i mean i know the the methanol will will boil off at a lower temperature than the ethanol which is why it comes out in the heads it's the first mm -hmm. out yeah um but it's also so, it's a mixture so like you're gonna get parts of it like even in the tails there's a bit of methanol that exists still like there's no way to 100 percent get it out entirely but it's just in extremely concentrated in the heads so that's usually why you dump that yeah so, so we've been going about 45 minutes now. I think we're going to put a hashtag in the chat. Okay, hold on. And we'll collect some some uh, some hashtags and give away some whiskey. Laura's going to type it. We're going to do hashtag tipsy. Yeah. And uh, there's a bunch of people that I didn't say hi to, but RJ the Fed just showed up. He's going back to work, so he's not sticking around. Uh, Whiskey Wisdom's been in chat for a while. Canadian Chris is here. And there were some more. Uh, Whiskey Tears. Hey, Justin, if you're still here, cheers to you. Hope you're doing another live stream again soon. That one was fun. Um, I think there were some other names. Joe Dickinson, Eric Gunderson, a couple more people. Sorry I missed you. Lots of cool kids. And if we didn't mention it earlier and you came in after we ran our intro video, we're drinking samples tonight that were provided by Brian at Buffalo Bourbon Enthusiasts. Um, we drank the Mafia Buffalo Bills edition first. Which is a one foot cock Buffalo distillery. And we're drinking the Hartman, or we just finished the Hartman's Distillery Experimental Series. It's a stout finish. That was pretty interesting. I don't I get the stout on the nose, but I don't get it in the taste at all. Yeah. Did you like next... it? I've never it had great? a stout finished anything that I liked. It, it's very simple. It's like a sweet, simple bourbon. It's free, so I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah, that's also BS because I do like the Westward. Yeah, West Westward stout finish one, but also 
like what you were saying, they sent me that. Uh, so it was free. So it's kind of hard to like be like, oh, it's it's a bad whiskey. No, it's like it's a good single malt. They just finished it in stout and it's like no, what I, I prefer good, it over the normal one. I, the, I don't know that I get the stout so, so much. So when we toured good. westward and we had the stout finished in our flight at the end, it was my least favorite. It was Laura's least favorite as well. I feel like it gets a little bit too dense and like kind of dark because there's something like really vibrant and fruity about their standard offering that I like a mm -hmm. lot that like you just don't get in the stout finish one. It goes a little bit too much into that like malty chocolatey <clears throat> thing, but it's not super yeah, chocolatey yeah. either. <laughs> Actually, during their their flight, they gave us this little like s'mores type board there were like marshmallows and hazelnuts like, and like dark chocolate and yeah. these cookies or something it was they they all went quite well with their their whiskey <laughs> it, was, it was a nice experience Canadian oh Chris sweet stout finished stout i love it <laughs> that's one of the few distilleries i actually like really want to go visit because i mean i'm not really excited when i see a still anymore so i'm like do i really want to go tour a distillery probably not uh, but like them, um, Iron Root down in Texas, I really want to go visit because I just, I love the people over at Iron Root as well. And then probably I want to visit like one of the big ones, like Buffalo Trace would be a great one to visit. But outside of that, like there's not a lot of distilleries where I'm like, I got to go see this because I, I still, I thought still. The, ex the experience at Westward though was amazing they gave us like these mini cocktails i mean it was like a shot glass but it had it was like a full cocktail with a Ooh. garnish and everything and this little tiny glass <laughs> like right when we got there while we were waiting for our tour and then we went through the tour and they let us taste everything so the beer wash which actually tasted good like they could have put that in a bottle i would have drank it and it's basically sierra nevada pale ale they use the same oh yeast. they're they basically brew it the same yeah mm -hmm. And they, um, I mean, they let us taste the hearts because it was just switching to the hearts. They were like, stick your finger in here and taste it straight off. And I mean, they were great. And then they let us taste everything they had there. So we did the flight and then anything, any bottles they could find, they were pulling out because we were the only people there, I think, that toured oh. that whole day. So they just like kept Oh, pulling. so they just hey, rolled out the red bottle. carpet try for y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, we, they didn't, they didn't. We were nobody. I mean, we were just random people that showed up and we were like a half hour late for our tour too. And they were still like, did all that stuff for us. Yeah. They were bringing out stuff for us to taste that like isn't available. Like we had a one pour that was called barrel two and it was literally the second barrel of whiskey they ever made. Oh, I thought it was like 20 Ooh. something, but either way, it was one of their it, first ones it they was... ever did. And it was very different. I felt than yeah. their, what they're producing now is definitely not as good, but it was, it was interesting to see the, the you win change. some, you lose some. You got, you, yep. you know, you got to break a few eggs to know how to make an omelet. Okay, we, <laughs> it yeah, takes a while to get there. Up, <laughs> yeah, we we picked up their rum finished single malt. And I love that. They one. actually gave us the bottle of Guatemalan rum, so the barrels that came to America from Guatemala were full of rum. <clears throat> they bottled them, and then we're like, you can have the rum and the single malt for purchasing the single malt. So we have the rum that that was finished in. Yeah. Do you recognize some similarities? A little bit, but honestly, it's not that good of a rum. It's, okay. it's like, <laughs> it's, it's young. It's, it's like completely clear, like sugar cane rum. It's very light. Um, but there, there is definitely some funk on that, that American single malt that, that is, you know, the rum. A tribute, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I really like that yeah, one because it, I think it's it's super light and sweet and just approachable. Like it's it's not the cheapest to be crushable, but like, man, if you get me in a mood and you're like, "Hey, this is your bottle. Have fun. Kill it." That that ain't coming home. <laughs> that, that's a good time. I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah, about too the good only of time. thing of theirs about the only thing of theirs i haven't really enjoyed a lot is the two malt oh it that was, was just... a weird sample you sent me right yes yeah. yes it was just I... a weird i forgot what was weird about it but i remember being like yeah this is a little, a little weird 
Um, yeah, I don't even remember. We haven't. Yeah. It's been sitting on the shelf. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that we've revisited it since we sent you the sample. <laughs> um, did you did you try the milestone? That's a pretty fantastic one. That's incredible. They <laughs> they graciously sent me a bottle of it. Wow. And we need to contact them. That and was. Tell them, hey, we do content. Can you please send us free stuff? <laughs> I will send you some contacts. But at awesome. the risk of uh, ruining relationships, if they're like, hey, how'd you get this contact? They're like, hey, I just found it. Like, I, you didn't get it from me. <laughs> okay. Fine. I didn't send <laughs> anything because I need this. Because <laughs> yeah. I love them. <laughs> I mean, they're I, probably, I can't afford their bottles. <laughs> yeah, they're they're probably one of our top five favorites. We have probably eight bottles of theirs. Yeah, and we, um, we bought the Milestone. So when, it would be nice to have not bought them. <laughs> I have yeah, 10. They're very good. Wow. Them and Elijah go. Craig small or Elijah Craig bulletproof barrel. Blah, 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 blah. Elijah Craig barrel proofs, geez Louise, uh, are like my two most common bottles. So Elijah Craig bottles and yeah. their bottles. Those are, and their bottles are fun too because they're all like that weird geometrical shape. Yes. They're great. That's like a diamond. I mean, that was another one of the shorts of yours that I almost used for this live stream was uh how you can tell if you're a fanboy and you showed like oh, all the yeah. bottles on the shelf and you yeah. were like a ton of sagamore a ton of elijah craig a ton of westward <laughs> that, that hasn't changed much if we're being honest yeah doc swinson's <laughs> i'm sure was on that because yep, i have yep. <laughs> quite a bit of doc swinson's my barrel collection's growing uh uh, that's another one where they've kind of sent me a few of them uh, as well. But uh, every sample, because they've also sent me some samples of their stuff too, like a little bit of their like bougie or fancier stuff. Man, I've went out and bought every single one outside of the Tale of Two whatever's because they Tale sent of two me. Islands, yeah. yeah, they sent me a sample of the Tale of Two Islands and a sample of the Ombrana cast finish. I bought the Ombrana one, but I did not buy the Tale of Two Islands. Gotcha. They're both good. So, though. so twenty-two entries for the the giveaway. Thirty-eight people in chat, guys. We're gonna go about four more minutes. Hashtag tipsy, if you want a chance to win four two-ounce samples from our personal collection. So we're drinking the Burning Chair Barrel Select Wine Finished, one hundred fourteen proof. Um, Beeler, Beiler, something like that. Store pick. That's pretty tasty. I'm having a hard time deciding what I want to drink next. It's a lot. I'm guessing you ever have it's those moods? something MGP. I struggle with that. <laughs> I can that make that happen. Time. <laughs> um, so is, uh, oh, I just went, what was the brand that's from here that we were just talking? Westward? Doc Swenson. Doc Swenson. Doc Swenson. Are they is from? Is there a lot of that? It's from Washington. Yeah. Uh, okay. I had no from idea. From Washington. Yeah. Um, huh. Is there a lot of it on the shelf near you? Um, no, not really. Uh, like their their standard offering is on the shelves and all. It's just uh, like I kind of hunt them a little bit. Oh, okay. Like that's what that's what I'll hunt because I think they're one of the few MGP blenders who has a good value margin. At least what I deem as like value. I think the quality of their product meets or exceeds the price tag that they put on it. Like I've, I've yet to get a product from them and I'm like, I would not buy this for what they're charging for. Cause usually a lot of their stuff's around like 50 to 80 bucks, which is kind of my like comfortable range anyways. And it's usually like cash strength MGP that's finished or not finished or really well blended, you know, like it's hard. It's hard for me to be like, yeah, those aren't going to work out for me. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had their session blend yet? Yes. I might actually go grab that right now. Uh, it's, it's good. It's, <laughs> um, I prefer barrel foundation over that, that like five-year-old hundred proof one, but the session okay. blends really good. Again, like 15 different or $15 value difference, because I think it's like 35 bucks or 30, 35. And then, uh, at least in my area, that's what it is. And then the barrel foundation's like a hundred, or uh, sorry, gotcha. uh, fifty bucks, hundred proof. Uh, have, so have you heard the rumors around barrel lately. 
No, I, again, I'm a little bit out of it. I just started school. So like I'm barely producing content. I don't have any time to watch any content. I'm kind of, I don't know. I've taken a step back, which is also real nice. Cause I can kind of just hop on things and be like, Hey guys, I'm here. I have opinions. And then, you know, <laughs> it's so, fun. so bourbon whiskey uncensored cheers, Ben, by the way. Um, he just put, uh, hope you don't like barrel too much. They might not oh. be around much longer. So, they just like this month, early this month, expanded oh. into the UK. And then like a week later, their brand new Rick House and their brand new expansion uh, facility. blending facility is up for sale. And they've discontinued the Stellum line and laid Possibly. off laid Possibly. off their entire sales force. Possibly. I mean, I don't love Stellum to begin with, so I'm not devastated about Stellum. Like, come on, I liked Barrel. No, no. I mean, I do like Doc Swinson's better, but like, Barrel. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, like, it's when just, I say uh, I've become an MGP fan, I mostly mean I've become there. a Doc Swinson's and Barrel fan. If we're being honest, there you go. <laughs> like that's what I've been buying a lot of. I mean, they're good. Barrel's not just just MGP. So then you don't you don't even no. have to say MGP. You you like blended whiskeys. <laughs> Or although that might yeah. make you think you're like a NDPs, I don't know. Non-distilling producers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. Hey, William Hall's here. William Cheers. Hall. Cheers, Haven't buddy. seen you in a while. Nice to see you. So Peter White also. Sorry. About one more minute to put in the hashtag tipsy for the. Free for, samples. For the free samples. And I'll take a minute also to promote the super chat. $5 super chats gets you entered into a four two ounce flight of bookers and also you will get the large trash pallet sticker with your five dollar super chat just email us and let us know where to send it yeah and uh so peter white says he has seven doc swinsons looking for the muscatel finish i hear good things about that one as the well. mouse cartel so, finish uh, one is incredible yeah and yes i call it mouse cartel <laughs> because i can't pronounce that <laughs> I, I mean, I like that pronunciation. It sounds nice. <laughs> the, the last yeah. <laughs> Doc Swinson's we saw that I really, really wanted yeah. but really couldn't afford was it the 15 year? Oh, I think. Oh, so. those ain't cheap. Year? Something like that. Yeah, it wasn't cheap. It was we're like, like yeah, those are like, like three hundred and it was like yeah. three hundred fifty bucks plus the, Washington plus the Washington <laughs> hell tax. So we if we you guys buy it online, right do you get taxed? Show. I think like so, because they're like a Washington buy, oh. brand, so they would automatically tax Washington stuff. Um, if they Damn. weren't a Washington band, maybe if they sell their stuff to a different company like Shared Poor or something, then it might not have the tax. I don't know. Yeah. So shall we give away That's some complicated? Whiskey? Yeah, let's 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 give away some whiskey. This guy oh, right here. Laura's going to share the screen. So do we. We do a lot of giving away stuff, which is the only way to make room for more bottles, honestly. Yes. We, we can't drink it fast enough. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Like the, 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 You would uh, need a new liver real quick. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there's the shared screen. We're going to do the drawing. Odds are good. 29 people, 41 in chat, only 29 entries. It's going to be me. Let's see. Nope. Jeff Castle. Jeff Castle, <laughs> a repeat winner. Nice. Congratulations. Should we just put the other one? Are you still in chat, Jeff? Just so we know you're still here. Uh, oh, look at that. Marvin says he did the Baker's crap bottle. So, spoiler, eventually we we uh we have a project with a bunch of people that we're uh doing some kind of bottle blending thing. So, uh that's it is what a, he's talking about. It, it is a crowdsourced blending project. And I mean I know what I'm adding. Like I haven't even tried it and I know <laughs> what I'm adding. <laughs> so so just to give you guys probably more information than I should, uh there's never too much information. About a month ago, we grabbed a fresh bottle of Cooper's Craft. We poured four ounces out of it, and we reserved two ounces. We drank two ounces, and we're like, this needs 
more spice, more proof, whatever, and we added whiskey to it to fill it back to the top. More mesquite smoke? And then we passed smoke? it on. Which one is that? Del uh, it's the Delbox O to Isla. Okay. Oh. It's their kind of uh, their take on trying to do, because they do a lightly peated malt as like your standard offering. This one's the one where it's like they cranked up the peat. Or it's not peated, sorry. It's mesquite smoke because they mesquite smoke uh, their malt to barley. So they did like a, they typically do a light one where this one they cranked it up to 11 and they mesquite smoked the heck out of it. And it is insanely good. I absolutely love okay. this bottle. It's, I mean, I just love wild. bourbons. Any bourbon blend I've ever done, any infinity blend, uh, my friend brought over an infinity bottle recently. Uh, and I kind of did the same thing. I just love adding a little hint of mis like smoke to it, not necessarily mesquite smoke, but like, Smoke's fun when you're blended. You got to like two ounces out of what, however many ounces are in a bottle. That's about all you need. But it's like just a smidge of it. Not enough to like change just the flavor a, profile and say, but just enough. Just a little body. Yeah. A little backbone. Well, let's so, put, you know, if you send it my way, it's definitely getting smoked. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Let's go hashtag smoke in honor of Steve's. Don't Stevens don't love do it yet, smoked though. whiskey. If you're in chat, don't type it yet because I gotta I gotta start the I'll be honest, uh, she's, I'm she's not a huge smoked whiskey fan. I'm a fan of whiskey that has a little bit of smoke in it. Like those heavily yeah. peated and heavily smoked ones usually aren't my jam. Outside so of I've got this bottle. Half a sample here of one you sent us. Oh, that one. The cherry oh. bomb you cherry you had smoked. Oh, <laughs> that one's incredible. I if you don't like that bottle, I'm gonna Was throw this, this computer across like? the room. I I liked it quite a bit actually. Oh, that's not the one. What's there the proof on that one? one say like, uh, it says sixty two percent. So oh, a, that's a high proof um, one. That's a monster. Teen or something. And then I've got half a sample of Peralta cask strength here at sixty six point five. Oh, the one I didn't like was like campfire or something cowboy what what was the there was some kind of like a, oh yeah i sent you guys the uh the um, i know i sent you guys the actual like our official samples and then i sent you guys some stuff from my personal collection yeah. the campfire style smoked one. Oh yeah i did i watched that i i remember this yeah um i'll be honest as a brand ambassador of adventure stills uh kelly please don't hate me for saying this i despise that whiskey i think that whiskey is straight up <laughs> trash he uh it, like our records show that people do really enjoy it like it is one of our more popular whiskeys that's why it is a mainstay but like I don't really like it. A lot of like the huge whiskey consumers I've had don't really like it. It's just Is it like people that make cocktails, maybe like it might it's be good funny cocktails. cocktails, like fruity cocktails, like a whiskey sour. Great in it, you know, like oh, a, that, something so that has like that wrong. lime, <laughs> that that like bright sharpness of a lime and then like that sweet custardy vanilla with some smoke like it, it works really well in cocktails. But that's kind of where I draw the line with that whiskey. Like, I will never drink that neat if I have any choice of like not doing it. It's just I don't. I just don't enjoy it. Yeah, There's I a lot of I our don't stuff think that I drink does. It. <laughs> I think I poured it into your glass. <laughs> I, th I think you did, and I drank it because I I drink it's, pretty much anything. It's also young I, as I'm, hell too. It's only like a year old because if you age it out any longer, it loses smoke. Uh, cause the way we smoke, it doesn't really retain well. Oh, so if we yeah. want it to be bold, we can't age it for more than like a year. Given, that's Arizona. So a year in Arizona is like five years somewhere else, but you know, take it as you will. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar Kitty says a weeded bourbon is great for a whiskey sour. I didn't know that there was a specific bourbon you were supposed to use. So, so maybe, maybe I've been doing it wrong. I just, just use rye juice and an egg white in there. <laughs> Pretty much sugar too. You gotta have sugar. Sugar, yeah. Do so you have sugar in a whiskey sour? I thought there was. It's been a while since I made one, but I thought yeah, it had same. some like simple syrup that, that or something. That would make it a whiskey sweet and sour. Yeah, I don't know. It was definitely egg white and lemon juice. And yeah, whiskey. I'm gonna make a whiskey sour after this now. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> what we're go. doing tonight. So I'm I'm hoping that there's some people that were 
we're kind of sending your way subscriber wise um, with this live stream tonight. What is the video that those new subscribers should watch first when they subscribe to your channel? Hmm. Ooh. Honestly, like, I don't know if I could remember back to here. I'm just going to go look at my most recent videos. And I love my controversial I ones. Who has that same Yeah. Response. I usually <laughs> just like everything's rinse and repeat. Not rinse and repeat. That sounds like disingenuous. But like. Um, Thanks, Gandy Road. I don't love doing reviews, so don't watch any of my reviews. That's not really like me. Um, I like a lot of my list videos because I share a lot of my opinions. So definitely probably be a list video. I don't believe it would be a list video that would be like super trendy. Um, like it's like, hey, best bourbon of 2023. Like, yeah, that's going to do great views. It's kind of it's. No, it's not fun and exciting compared to some of the other ones. Honestly, the one of the controversial ones, like if it has a controversial headline, I love those. I love those. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> that's what we're doing next week. I'm going to think of a controversial topic. It's it's going to be all I think about. But uh, yeah, honestly, I think how long ago was that video that you showed? Was that like about a year ago? Probably a, It was probably a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like maybe, in maybe, that maybe series. A little more. Yeah, because. I remember around like start of 2023, somewhere around that time frame. Like that's kind of where I was like, I'm going a little unhinged because I kind of, you know, like I stopped caring about people's not feedback, but like negative. I stopped caring about negative thoughts early on, but like I kind of really stopped caring around then. And I was like, I want to do things that are fun and exciting. So I'm just going to start being not controversial just to be controversial, but I'm going to share the unfiltered opinions that are in my head. And mm -hmm. so those videos, I, I would, those would probably be like that series of like that, that time frame where I was trying to like ruffle feathers a little bit. That's, that's peak me. Those are the, my best videos <laughs> minus that mustache. The mustache was I rough. mean that mustache <laughs> makes you like be like, whoa, look at this guy. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, I, I mean I, I can appreciate the mustache. I'm I'm Navy veteran. Okay. And so Yeah, but you can grow I, mustache. I didn't grow mustache. Well, like it, it just yeah. it's not it's not made for me. I mean, no one looks good with the that cut of the mustache. When, when I was I've 20, seen a lot of people with that. When, when I was twenty six, my mustache looked a lot like yours. You have a you have a better beard game than than I did back okay. then. Okay, <laughs> but but the navy is like, you join the navy and you're frozen in time. So when I was in the navy back in the the late eighties, early nineties, um, it's like all of the chiefs, which is the E seven, mm -hmm. E E seven, E eight, E nine. Those guys were like stuck in the seventies. They wore like their leisure suits. They had those big chimo mustaches. <laughs> and it, so, I, I mean, I can appreciate where you're coming from with the cheesy little, little mustache there. And by the way, I, I acknowledge, thank you for, for being in the military and all that. Oh, you know what you is the most awkward well. thing in the world for me is when someone says, thank you for your service. Yes. That's I don't why know I how said to respond back. to that. <laughs> You just say so thank I, you for I, your support. I, I try to I try to be like those old ladies on red or whatever the equivalent of that is in person. You know and they're like, hey, thank you for your service, sir. And it's like, first of all, not a sir. I was like, you see this? There's some stripes and rockers on there. I mean, I am. My, that's my long term goals is to become a sir. But for now, I worked my way here. OK, I worked my way yes. here. We'll we'll get there eventually. But until then, you know, it's like not really a sir, but also thank you for your support, ma'am. Yes. Because so this was a whole conversation Laura and I had prior to this live stream because she's like, you're going to say that to him. And I'm yes. like, I absolutely. He gets it. The... I get it. We make it. It makes sense. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I see you. OK. Yes. It's one of those if you know, you know things. But if you don't know, you don't know. But, but, but when people say thank you for your service, it's like the most awkward. I, I just don't know how to respond. Right. It's the same thing like Laura and I are both registered nurses in our mm -hmm. civilian occupations. No, that's and, an incredible occupation, COVID, by the way. Like, yeah. So, so during COVID, you had this 
heroes work here and it's the same kind of thing it's like how do i how do you respond to something like that you you just can't so i just say thank you you know yeah and, also and... like it really depends on your reasoning for and listening because like for me for example it was like i had no better options i was a child and a recruiter <laughs> came into my school and was like hey i'll help you get paid for school it just took me nine years of my contract to actually start going to school you know, like <laughs> I didn't join because of the, you know, the red, white and blue. I didn't grow up in like Toby Keith land, you know, singing that song like that. That just wasn't my life. But, you know, eventually <laughs> that, that I found funny. parts of that. <laughs> but like, you know, like I don't remember 9-11. I mean, I was four, three and a half when that happened. Mm -hmm. Four. Yeah, I, I would have been three or four. Somewhere around there. But like, I don't remember any of that. Like, that's not that's I didn't join for the patriotism. I found my way there through the, you know, place of, you know, living that life and doing all that jazz. But like, for me, it's like, hey, I didn't join for the service or anything like that. So it's kind of hard because I also I can empathize now. But initially I was like, uh, what, what blah, 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 blah. it was like. I just want school guys. Like I'm not really serving anybody. So it was, it was it's, it's weird. It's been a weird road. <laughs> yeah. I understand that one. I was, I was planning to be in the military. I had a ROTC scholarship for college and then I had an asthma attack. So they, they, uh, Oh, you just don't tell them you have asthma. I have it was, asthma. It was, well, no, it was actually, during uh, activity. Can you that part? I had an asthma attack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so I, I i got removed from it but oh. i did get two years free before then so that i guess that was yeah. nice and, uh, and anybody that's in chat don't 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 hear what we're not saying i i appreciate you acknowledging me and, oh yes, and the yes commitment i i, I it, it's just very awkward for me i'm i'm not used to being in the spotlight and you know people think random people thanking me for something that was just a part of my life back when i was a younger human um i i appreciate the the commitment that every service member makes um and like steven said if you know you know like so he he's he's military Ec yeah exactly we we acknowledge each other i see you um but but just just know when you say thank you for your service it's it makes it awkward for us <laughs> It's just a smidge. It's it's also awkward walking around with like in in uniform in general. Like it's like you know you're still a human being, so you're like it's like hey man, I gotta eat, but it's just awkward, especially when you gotta wear the hat. Yes, like the and, drill and you're, hat. You're that's somewhere not where there's not a lot of military bases, right? No, I mean, <laughs> I'm we're close to National Guard bases. But because uh, my my units, how do I say this without like breaching some sort of OPSEC? Um, my unit is very close to a medium sized National Guard base, um, at least for like as far as National Guard bases go. So it's like we're kind of in the area where it's like you wouldn't be surprised to see people because it's like, oh, hey, it's just down the road. But also like it's like. It's it's not a common thing to see. Like, I mean, I live 15 minutes away from my unit and I hardly ever see anybody in greens outside of the yeah. ROTC people from ASU, those little goobers. That was like me in college. So, so my <laughs> last round in those uniforms yep, my last... in San Francisco. So it was also very strange. You know, no one else <laughs> walking around like that in San yeah. Francisco. Uh, my last couple years in the Navy, I was a recruiter in Houston, Texas. So you so we you were, were basically a predator. Uh, like that's that's <laughs> yes, entirely exactly. what that job is. The only people who are like the only way that's legal is because it's the you know that's the government who's doing it. Like anyone else is like, hey, I get paid to stand outside of school and proposition young human beings. It's like yes. <laughs> when you put it like that, it's like, um, buddy, you should get arrested. Uh, but no, it's like, hey, when it's like, hey, do you want to sell your soul to the government or whatever that is? You know, yep. Yeah, I think I remember in high school taking the what is the the as as -Bab. As -Bab and and then they were like, oh yeah, you should join us, and I remember that. Yeah, 
school. That was in school though they weren't waiting outside that was like in the school yeah so yeah it's like them in. they're allowed inside the doors <laughs> i mean not not to go the full ponzi political scheme here <laughs> exactly not to go full political here but you know how like i mean it's your channel the, you send it i'm not gonna the say poli it. the politicians will divide the american society up into categories right oh geez the military i don't know, I don't know that this is good the military invented that so like with you specifically you were an upper mental group female which is like extra points for recruiting like they they, yep. they dole points out for people and you know they if you were minority that. that would that the only thing that would be better is if you were a minority and you went into the nuclear program so it, it's yeah, crazy like how the government does that high asvab scores going into high jobs because you actually i mean i'm not a recruiter but like i know enough to know the writing on the wall like going into like getting someone into a high like job that's difficult that needs like a high asvab score uh because i don't know at least for me i scored really high on my asvab and my recruiter pushed for not the highest bonus because i could have made a lot more doing other stupid stuff um but like he like pushed for it. it's like hey this is the highest job you'll be able to get do that like it was like do 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 come on come on come on come on and it's like you know like females yeah it's an underrepresented uh subsection of the military because there's not a lot of you guys in there because you know it's like you guys weren't allowed to do anything in there for a long time so it's like why would you want to join so now there's a lot of emphasis on hey let's get more women into it because guess what uh women are still an asset to everything like they have been the entire existence of world oh, life yes. everything so it's like why wouldn't we have them in there um and then you know uh everything's kind of getting social credit scory nowadays so that's just natural it is what yeah, it is yeah. the, the the government's just ahead of the curve don't worry about it yeah because they are the curve so, so steering the conversation back to whiskey uh Bu Buffalo bourbon enthusiast Brian, this Kings County Distillery private barrel pick. It's really good. 129 proof. It's this really is freaking fantastic. This what is, is Kings like, County from? Kings County's New in New York. Okay. I've had some of their stuff before, and I remember having a very similar thought of like, man, this stuff's incredible. I can't recall when, where, but that name hit yeah. a memory recall of... That stuff's good. That's a special. Are those are the bottles that like are blank. Basically, it looks right? like a blank bottle with like a, oh, a white, white, white label that bottom. somebody used a typewriter to type on. Yeah, yeah. they they look like the um, not. Oh man, what am I trying to say? Prohibition era style, yes, kind of yes, bottles. Yes. Like it's it it looks very. Or at least their branding is very like, hey, we're from the prohibition era where people didn't label bottles they just put a strip on it that said like hey bourbon right like if you made if you made whiskey like it's like i probably wouldn't put a lot of dot like information unless if i had to i'd probably just put like age what is it mash bill and that's probably about it no crazy story on the back no. yeah <laughs> i mean not, that's not um, so the best for marketing but <laughs> It works. So, Troy, you got a question from Always Fish Hard. He was wondering how the palate recovery is going. So, so full disclosure, Laura and I both had our very first COVID infections recently. In 2024? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so Laura so got you skipped first. 2020, 2021, 2022, yep. 2023. Yes, and we work in healthcare. Laura, Laura had it first. Um, she gave it to me. Thanks for blaming it on me. Uh, well, I didn't get it. He's from just telling else. the truth. He's just telling the truth. <laughs> so you I brought would that say into my this house. <laughs> my nose is probably around seventy percent, and my palate is probably right there about seventy. So as good as I think this is, it's probably a lot better. Yeah, that's such a weird uh, thing. The only time I've ever felt like that uh, outside of COVID was when I stopped drinking for four months and then I started drinking again. Uh, Cause like it's, it's wild letting your palate recover. I remember the first time cause I wasn't when I got COVID first, I wasn't 
doing the YouTube channel, so I wasn't really worried about it, but I was still kind of very heavily invested in the YouTube whiskey interaction, all that jazz. So I was like, man, whiskey just doesn't taste the same. And it took a long time for me to get back there. And then when I took time off, I was like, oh no, what if I don't like whiskey anymore? Like what, <laughs> what if, because oh, no. I remember I killed a bottle of Angel's Envy and typically I'm like, Angel's Envy is kind of like, it's overrated. It's mid, but like, I just kind of killed it because it, it's the only low proof whiskey that I enjoyed at the moment. Like I killed two bottles of that before I was like, all right, let's get into something a hundred proof. And then we slowly rolled that roller coaster up. Like it is, <laughs> it's it's hard after you lose your palate. But I'm glad it's coming back, because I know there's it's a few people who back. lost it and never got it back. That's what yeah. Or like some people, it's like me. a year later, they're still like, I can't taste anything. I feel like I'd be really skinny though, because that like three days that I couldn't taste anything, I didn't really eat anything because it's boring to eat or drink anything if you can't taste it. Yeah, I don't think that's the healthiest weight loss journey. Probably not. (laughs) I don't encourage this. (laughs) So you should still eat. (laughs) So 38 people in the chat, 26 entries. Hashtag smoke, S-M-O-K-E. We're going to go two more minutes and we're going to give away some whiskey. And then, Stephen, if you're okay with that, we're going to put the link in the chat and invite some people on with us. Yeah. Um, I'm along for the ride at this point. Yeah, yeah. And while we're getting these last few entries rounded up, uh, final question here. Do you have any upcoming projects or collaborations that you can talk about? Right now, I'm in survival mode uh, because (laughs) it turns out working 40 hours a week while still having two other official jobs because, you know, Army Reserves, which I mean, like it's part time as heck, but it's still like a quarter of my weekends and uh, I'm in a position where I have to actually do a little bit of work outside of drill time, too. So it's like it takes up a little bit of my schedule and then working at the distillery part time as well, which, again, I still kind of work super part time as well, kind of like the reserves. But like those three jobs mixed with doing YouTube content mixed with going to school again, I'm real burnt out. So I kind of take everything one week at a time. I don't have a huge scope pushed out like I used to. That being said, this last, we've been going for an hour and 26 minutes, has encouraged me to get controversial again. I'd like, I I mean, I know it's only been an hour and 26 minutes, but like, I want to ruffle some feathers. I'm just, I'm excited (laughs) about that. So like, that's, my goal is to find, I guess, to bring it back to the original question, my goal is to find where I exist in whiskey tube now, because I started doing the vlogging content. That's no longer an option anymore. And I thought that's what was going to kind of separate me from everybody else because I got a little burnt out with doing those list videos and I stopped producing content in general. And I don't really enjoy doing reviews anymore like I used to. So I'm trying to figure out my voice and where I belong. And maybe it's just making very dumb opinions, which I got a (laughs) lot of those. So I don't know. We're, we're, we're figuring it out one week at a time, but I know regardless, my goal is to produce at least one edited video and one live stream a week. So that's kind of the plan. I'm definitely making a controversial video next week though. I hear you're also, going to be on a live stream uh whiskey six in like a month oh, or yes something. oh my there you, go. How, you know that and i don't even remember that yes <laughs> i i've started creating we were, a google we were calendar just on with them on Wednesday. okay i'm creating a <laughs> yeah. google calendar to keep track of everything i have going on in my head because i just can't anymore with all the little side projects and there was like two months ago i was like yeah i couldn't do that i could do that i could do that i could do that i could do that and at one point i found myself doing a day where it's like why did i promise i could do this this and that and i was like there is no feasible like i'm a timelines person 
So it's like, Hey, I know, like I need to be here for two hours. It's going to take me 30 hours, like 30 minutes to transit. I need to be like, I, that's how I live my life. And I allow like leeway space where it's like, Hey, I'm going to, I know I'm going to F around a little bit here. Hey, I'm probably going to talk a little bit more than I should. Man, I found myself in a few days where it's like, dude, there's no way I can do everything. And then I had to start canceling on things and I hate doing that. So ever since then, I've started creating a schedule because I just can't keep everything associated <laughs> in here. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. So so Piper John put a comment in the chat. Uh, the Steve and Jordan show works. There you go. Yes. I'm glad you guys like it. I, I love having Jordan on because he really does bounce out my um, unhinged what I just I turn a camera on and I start talking. I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth as <laughs> it's coming out. So like Jordan is a lot smarter than me. For one, he's a lot more reserved than I am. Maybe not. I don't know. He's also a Marine, so he is a little dumb. But uh, <laughs> I, I absolutely love Jordan. Our energies, like, because when, when you get like eight drinks into crayons. him, yeah, when you get eight drinks into him, he's he might start eating crayons. But like before those eight drinks, he's like, he's like, hey, spreadsheets. He's like, we should code an algorithm. Like he's 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 dumb, smart. Uh, but yeah, and he also he loves data analytics, so he's the one who does all of our like research and stuff, uh, which nice. I appreciate because I I'm someone who can appreciate the information, especially if the information leads to some sort of end result. So anything involving like, hey, this is you know this whiskey tastes like this because it's six years old, or you know like that kind of data for at least our this industry, I love to be able to put like numbers and names to the faces, things of that nature. And he kind of does all that for me because I normally just fly by the seat of my pants like a psychopath. <laughs> I'm going to inverse the question to you guys. Anything big you guys have going on? But also, um, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Again, words just started to come in. Um, <laughs> check out Whiskey 6. I know this is my channel, but I'm going to plug. Uh, check them out. I know you guys were on there last week. I'll be on there in about like three weeks, a month, somewhere in there. You know we're gonna look it up. Something like that. It, it's a really good time. We, Any we got a lot of plans? Fun while I'm looking up the timeline, what uh, what future, what projects do y'all have going on? I know you guys got projects because you wouldn't add that question if you didn't have projects actively going on. Yeah, yeah. So, so next Saturday, well, we we do our our typical Monday Friday videos. Monday is going to be very controversial. <laughs> we we may lose some people over that. Don't worry about it. You I don't need to keep I'm them anyways. About it. I, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I got to get some stuff off my chest, right? So, yes. So we're, we're going full sand on Monday. Friday Saturday. is going to be a, a fun video. Laura and I are having a little competition. Next Saturday, Sean from Echoes in Eternity Bourbon and I are going to be, and well, and I and Laura, because Laura is the one with the true palate here. We're going to be in a competition. We've delivered samples back and forth we're going to go a a normal shelf whiskey an allocated whiskey and a homemade blend Ooh. matt from whiskey wisdom is going to be our referee and we are going to taste through these samples and try to determine what is the allocated whiskey what is the blend and what is the shelfer see what's fun that's going to be him... difficult <laughs> what's That's, fun about him announcing this. this is that uh you don't um, know i don't keep track of our schedule no. at all yeah so i knew this was at some point but i didn't know when this was so it's next week fun. It's, it's next next <laughs> good saturday to know. good to know <laughs> this saturday after that we're gonna have patrick from whiskey cove on with us on our live stream and then uh We'll I mean, just keep doing this. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, Videos and, and live streams. Yeah. So you guys are kind so, of where I'm at where it's like, hey, we're just, I, you think two weeks out. I, I'm currently thinking about a week out, but like same, same, but different, but still same. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So no, no barrel picks. Uh, actually, we've been invited on a barrel pick. I don't we, think I'm going. We don't know if we're going or not. There's a Jack Daniels uh, single barrel barrel proof and a single barrel barrel proof rye. We've been invited on that in June. 
I would love to go. I just don't know that I want to spend the money. I go. wish Laura would change it's her expensive. mind because I would love to go. <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> Flights, hotels, like, unless yeah. if they're comp and all that. They're not. No. Nobody's comping anything. <laughs> it's yeah. just an opportunity to go to Jack Daniels and, and pick some. See behind the curtain. Stuff. Yeah. Jack, Jack um, Daniels will be one of those ones to visit, though. Like, they, they're big. Or, and or I, I personally Daniels. love Jack Daniels. I love Jack Daniels. Like anything other than the number eight, Jody, man. Bourbon Bounty, what's up? You really? I, I think you should go. Quick. I, I, I should. think so Send as it. well. We we have the time off. Send it. Send it. Uh, I might, mean... as well. might as well contact him and be like, is the offer still there? Yeah. So so <laughs> story time distilling, Shane. Uh, he's going to be on our show at some point. We just got love to Shane. sync up dates. And... Uh, you know that's kind of it. We've we've got a a narrow focus right now, and uh, we're we're just gonna trudge forward with that. And I think it's time to give away some whiskey. Whiskey. Send Hashtag it. Hashtag smoke. I'll give it uh, like thirty seconds, just in case anyone just entered it and it's not showing up yet. But I'm guessing they have By the way, because um, this is coming from somebody who hasn't watched a lot of your guys' content because again just haven't gotten around to it not that i wouldn't um but like who has the better palette and why because i'm curious about that because typically there's someone who has a better palette and i know there's typically a reason why so so this is easy laura has the better palette and I think it's just with lower proof stuff. it's because Laura is more adventurous with eating weird foods that could be the reason so oh, I so like you just don't like weird can... ethnic foods you're you're a burger guy i i mean no i i like some stuff but like when we go to a restaurant i can tell you within 30 seconds what laura's going to order off the menu and it's the weirdest thing on there <laughs> I've, I've got to see what they can do <laughs> and because that's who she is and i love that about her 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 experiences with flavors is so much more vast than mine that she pulls stuff out that i wouldn't even have thought of so yeah her palate 100 percent is way better than mine okay yeah, so you're just saying all the right answers easy. tonight. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, you, you read between I mean, the lines. You're like, this is the right answer. So this is what I have to say. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I've been there before. <laughs> okay. Let's do our giveaway. Let's do our let's giveaway. Do giveaway. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing here. Okay. So <laughs> let's see. Who's going to win some whiskey? Whiskey Bulldozer. I don't think I've seen that name before, and you don't have a wrench, so you're probably new. Thanks for being here. And Eric, oh, here. It was almost you guys again. Almost. <laughs> uh, surprisingly... That has happened before. I, it has only mm -hmm. happened once, though, which is pretty surprising, because it's I'm entered at every single one. So I type it in there. Eric so. Gunderson, congratulations. Samples are headed your way. I don't even know what that word is. Skung, skungilly? You're going to have to tell me what that is. Because you know what? I might order guacamole. it. If I saw Damn, it on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so let's show the, the pictures of the Super Chat bottles one more time. Okay, hold on. I'm going to promote it one more time. And then we're going to give it about 10 minutes and give it away. Oh, ow. here, wait, uh, let me let me add so, something to that super chat before we do. Uh, give me one second. OK, and I, I say this week after week after week. It's like Beetlejuice. You say somebody's name and they show up in chat. And Shane. Look, and look who time. just, show, look who just showed up in chat. <laughs> Hey, cheers. It's story time. So what Dang. samples do you all have in there? Because I have two bookers. I will add on top of whoever gets this giveaway. Have... I have the 2022-02 and the 2023-03. We don't have either of those. Neither okay. one of those I... is in this flight. Let's add to it. I will send out uh, samples of both of these as well as uh, one of my grand... Jeez Louise. Glenn Karen's to whoever wins this as well. So I'm just going to kind of sweeten the pot. We'll give like so five more go. minutes before you do Anyone the drawing that so that to... can settle in. 
Five dollar super chat so, to enter. So for you're that. talking eight, six bookers, six bookers, six, and yeah, a Glen Karen, and a giant trash pallet sticker. Every five dollar super chat gets you entered. I I'm gonna enter myself because <laughs> that is an amazing, amazing giveaway. Yeah, have I sent you guys a Glen Karen yet? I have like probably the six or seven uh, more of them and i need order so. i i i do not have a tipsy whiskey shenanigans glen cairn i will send you guys some samples then i mean we, we can do this them. again i got a decent amount of free that. time i need to have you guys what's your schedules look like on we usually go thursdays at like 5 30. are you guys busy then so are you 5 30 pacific you 5 30 central 5 30 uh, Arizona Arizona doesn't change their time. So currently oh, we're on time Pacific. Is it, there right now? <laughs> it is 741. Okay, so, 1941. Okay, so so yeah, we're on the same timeline. We're 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 usually free. Okay. I'm like getting home from work usually about that it, time. If it's but... a if it's a day that Laura's off though, we and we can arrange that. Okay. We would love yeah. to join you. Yeah, yeah. I'll send I'll send you guys a Glen Karen a, some samples and then we can kind of connect and share like the pores at the same time you'll meet Jordan. He's lovely. Um, you know, all, all the things above. I, there we go. Some yeah. more chats coming in. Hell yeah. Yes. We've Thank got you. Beach day bourbon, like here. bourbon a lot. Delan Robbins life from the patio. Thank uh, you guys. And send us your email for the sticker. Laura, Whether you win or not, Laura will put Eric that Gunderson. email. Two for you, two for Rebecca Boyle. Got it. Such a gentleman, Eric, and congratulations on your win earlier 10 minutes ago. Was it even that long? If it was even, even that know. long ago. Time is just a construct, okay? Doesn't matter. I've been Brandy. watching a little bit much, too much True Detective, and Matthew McConaughey is starting to get to me a little bit, okay? <laughs> so you're, Please tell me you guys have seen that. First season, right? That's yeah, the, the first we've season's good. The, we've seen, okay. We've seen everything but the new season, and the new season okay. is on Apple TV only. What is up with that? No, it's on, it's on it's HBO, on HBO. I thought. It's on HBO. Is we it? just yeah, we just don't have HBO right now. Is that what it is? Yeah, I bet I've I kind of save HBO for like when there's a whole bunch of good stuff all at once, and then I'll and then I'll pay for it for a little bit. We'll binge a bunch of stuff and then get rid of it. HBO is <laughs> a slow roll. Like it it does. <laughs> It, it's not one to retain constantly. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't but had, it's had like HBO some good stuff. since Game of Thrones. I think so, yeah. The but House of Dragons really is about to start it. coming out. Yeah, when it when once it's all out, you know, the, I, I'm not coming to I'm not doing it right when like the first episode comes out and you gotta all wait right. weeks. See, I'm in, I'm, I'm in that weird phase freshwater. where I'm letting everyone else pay for things and all I pay for is Paramount Plus, but I have access to literally everything. Like well, I got I Netflix, I got I got all that jazz. Right uh Netflix, didn't they just start doing where they um are if it's like at a different residence that you gotta like verify that it's you and then it's only temporary yeah. and you have to keep doing it? So Netflix is harder, but the rest of them you can share. Yeah, Netflix became difficult. Fortunately, um I now live or my, my little sister moved in, which is fantastic because she's a chef, so when she cooks, ah. she doesn't often because guess what? Yes. Chefs don't cook as much as you think they do when they get home. They're kind of lazy, like hot pockety type people. But like I get that because they work real hard. But when she does like cook, cook, oh man, I'm eating like a king. I don't deserve that kind of stuff. But she buys Netflix. So <laughs> I now have Netflix at my house. Pretty great. Not going to lie. That, but also that is awesome. Netflix wise, <laughs> pro tip to everybody out there. If you are on a portable device, i.e. a laptop or a phone. There's no like they don't they don't apply that same system to that. And they only do that for like stationary elements because. Well, then those couldn't don't you just play it on your phone and then like yes. broadcast it to the TV and it's the same thing? Yes, pro tip. <laughs> That's what that's you're reading between the <laughs> okay. lines. You're getting where I'm getting. So it's like you can okay. do that. That works. At least that works for my laptop. I don't use my phone. I don't use the whole casting thing. Not because I couldn't figure it out, just because I don't want to figure it out. 
it's too many yeah. things and casts and it's it's a lot and like what if i'm watching a video and then i want to text somebody on my phone like it's too much there's too many things going on all at once. I, I get that. I, I uh, We don't do a whole lot of that. We have all the apps. We we share them, but so for some reason, no one's paying for any of our our streaming services. Oh. What's that about? Why are we paying for other people's streaming services, but they're not paying for ours? I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no context. No exactly what i said does not compute we, we share we share some of our our stuff so i'm gonna pour some whiskey you're still i'm still working on pouring I'm half behind way behind i'm working on the burning chair still and it's no, quite good no you're yeah. on no oh no that's i'm on king yes. you're on king county king county you've got the cherry bomb here i'm switching to the peralta cask strength is that the four-year-old because I kind of want to excuse to drink that. 66. Yeah. Sixty-six yeah, yeah. point five percent. I'm that going there. I'm gonna go grab it's that bottle. That good. bottle's incredible. That's that's <laughs> yes. like our. That is the distillery I works for. Kind of like our version of like Thomas H. Handy or like uh, Stag, something of that nature. Like that was a unpractical production for us because we didn't really make any money even with that being charged at $90 because we lost so much goddamn. sorry. I, I do apologize. I don't know if I was allowed to say anything, not, you know, censored I think we him, said some bad words, but, um, you gotta say. <laughs> uh, but like we lost so much freaking whiskey just due to like evaporation and stuff being in Arizona and in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Like, we broke even on that barrel at best with that being a $90 wow. product and $90 is the most we've ever charged for a cash strength offering and probably will be the most we ever charge because yeah, uh, we, we, we don't like to adventure stills. Uh, we like to mess around with our mash bills and make weird whiskey, but like we also like we're a whiskey distillery that or primarily whiskey distillery. We distill other stuff, but like our entire thing is like we don't want to gouge people or like it, it's a business. So like we got to do what we got to do, but we try to not charge more than we as consumers would pay, if that makes sense. So ninety dollars was a pretty big push for us, and yeah, that that's that one lives in my heart a little bit. That and did I send you guys the Syrah it, one? No, I don't. I, think so. I don't think we got the Syrah. <sighs> I'm gonna send you guys that next because that's that's my personal <laughs> favorite. It's that mash bill, but if you finish it in a Syrah barrel at like two and a half years instead of four years, mm. so it's it's not as like oaky and dark and intense and high proof. But it has that Syrah, that like deep red wine influence with that chocolate. It is, it's my favorite bottle. I'll tell you what. So good. We, when we just went up north to Seattle for my birthday trip, we stopped by Westland out of Seattle. Mm -hmm. We got their single malt finished in Syrah. We'll trade you. Okay. Yes. I'm into that. I have their sherry wood and I love the sherry wood bottle <laughs> so is much. That what we got? Syrah. Is the Syrah? Okay. Yeah, that one it is really so good. freaking good. Dessert. So Beach Sand Bourbon. I got you I got you down for two entries um, for the Bourbon King, Dave Vogelsang. Dave Vogel samples. <laughs> <laughs> this Peralta is so good. Oh my god. Whiskey yeah. rocks. This is our Cheers unicorn for sure. It, it is so, so good. How do you feel about the chocolate malt? Like, is it too chocolatey? I know this is obviously, like I said, a unicorny bottle, so it's very different. But I always love hearing people's opinions about the chocolate malt because sometimes it's a bit too much. I, I, I love it. I love it. I mean, this is so, so good. It's so unique as well it's a very different flavor than you get from other stuff so let's let's pin the link up there i'm working on it laura's working on pinning the link shane from story time i'm i'm hoping you're planning on jumping in yeah shane it's been too long since we talked anyways 
I've been yeah, MIA. Fun in these live streams. It's always a good time. He's, he's probably about, I wouldn't say three sheets. He's probably like two sheets to the wind right now. It is a Saturday <laughs> night. It is a Saturday, Saturday night. night. <laughs> but thing. I still find it crazy. Shane, he, <laughs> he, <it's> <laughs> he's so he's three and a half. He clears his palate with Mountain Dew, and I find that psychopathic, but he also has a significantly better palate than I do. So, like, I can't fault the guy either. Right. Wild. <laughs> because okay, it's so... like you got better taste in whiskey than I do. Rusty Lugnuts is going to jump in. And uh, Rusty, you think, you think we should do the uh, giveaway? Rusty, are you still doing your charity sober push? I am. I am. Uh, How many days? I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to uh, April 11th. So March 11th to April 11th. That's, okay, that's so amazing. You're two weeks in. Pretty good. Pretty good. Love it. It's, uh, it's is rough. Is that your real background? Uh, that... Yeah, this is my this is my second house. Um, you know, I no, it's 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 green screen. <laughs> this one looks more real than some of your other ones. Oh, okay, I can kind of see the line around you now. But I was yeah. like, oh, we've got an actual background today. So, so Stephen, do you know Rusty? <laughs> no, not at all. So I mean, so maybe Rusty he's popped has, in, but he, he's got he's got a small channel. Uh, for whiskey tube but he also has a bigger channel where he does like a variety shit show on sunday nights called the off track syndicate and yep. uh rusty's rusty's doing this sober push for a month for charity right now and he's gonna make some serious money what's the charity rusty uh warhorselegacy.org it is a, a veterans uh you know to help vets uh, get over uh, PTSD and and uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it works for veterans and their families. Love what it. would y'all so, mind? Do me a favor. I'm... Drop links in chat as well as uh, drop the link to the charity foundation if you don't mind. Because right. uh, I'd love yeah. to one subscribe because I'm you know I'm clearly not subscribed and it costs me nothing to subscribe. As well as I would love to look into that more. Sorry, okay, carry so on. So our, our next person that we were we were laughing when you were talking, it was not about what you were saying, Rusty, but no. uh drunk Shane popped in here. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pop him onto the screen. Shane it says What's up? Drunk Shane. Let me hide the comment so you can see it. <laughs> go. There you go. Love the bakers. <laughs> there we go. We got names and everything. How you doing, buddy? Let's go. <laughs> drinking since two what have you been dr drinking all right is it getting Taking any better scroll through the name yeah you're better now it's, it's better oh, okay. yeah, yeah. You're, you're good i gotta get closer to my uh you know wi-fi thing <laughs> your wop you stroll the neighborhood what, yeah, what, yeah what have you been drinking oh my god so I hosted an event today for a local bourbon group and started literally at two and it's now 11. So I've been drinking for a solid nine hours. I'm not drunk. You got a better liver than me. I'm just drinking. <laughs> just drinking. <laughs> How are you, you guys? Oh, by the way, uh, yeah. hello, Rusty and hello, uh, Steven. You sexy, sexy man, you. It's been a while. It's been know. a while. We haven't <laughs> talked in a long while. Yeah. You don't call me anymore. Yeah, I, know. I, got an I got another man, you know? I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. It hurts. It cuts deep. It does. I'm sorry. It's dark in these streets. This uh, one's getting real older, guy. <laughs> Go ahead. Bring it. I got a couple more people to bring on, so I'm just going to bring on Big oh, Cat oh. and land just so uh, Big Cat! they're joining as well. Oh, Cheers, guys, dude. Hey, everybody, Big Cat's the coolest. Who has a name so, like Big so... Cat? Well, not a lot of just people. Big cat. That's right. That's right. Just, big cat. <laughs> just, just the Big Cat. Yeah. So, so Shane, did you hear? Like, literally, we were talking about you <laughs> five minutes before you jumped in. Were you? Were you cussing <laughs> me? Is that what was going we on? Were, 
we were we were talking about this Jack Daniels barrel picks coming up. In oh June, yeah, right? June. Yeah, June. Actually, two of them. So we're doing uh, two barrels in June and two barrels in August. That's a lot of barrels. Wow. That's amazing. It's a lot of barrels. Yeah. So is and, is, and I is think we've barrel. got Laura. I think we've got Laura talked into wanting to do it. Okay, which one do you want to do, Laura? Uh, if, if June or got... August? Uh, Laura, I'll make room for you. What's the date in What's the date in August? Uh, twenty eighth on both of them, actually, June twenty eighth and August twenty eighth. Twenty eighth of August. Um, I'll email you tomorrow, or text okay. you. One of the two. Shane at Storytime Distillery, or you can text me. <laughs> I've got your I've got your phone number too. So. Ah, uh, fair enough. You can text me. Send, so send me to, pics of Troy. Just to be a little funny here. Is um drunk Shane walking the neighborhood to case houses to pay for the barrel? <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> you don't you don't want the answers to the questions, I promise. And you don't want it live on YouTube, so all right. No, no, no. I'm I'm uh, I'm outside. I've been hosting an event all day. I don't know if you guys can see my bar, but the door's down so you can't see it, but uh the wi is not working so good in there, so I had to step outside. So Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, I think we're going to do our giveaway for our super chat stuff. So if anyone that's been here a while wants to find out if they won or not, let's uh, add that to the screen. So and this is for a six, six Booker flight, a Glen Cairn, and a super sized trash pallet sticker. Yeah. Okay. So I shuffled it several times. We got a pretty good Steve. amount of entries Steve. tonight. So thank you guys. And let's see what we get. Send it. And Miles, I got Rusty. you in there, just so you know. I didn't. Rusty, you won last except. week. You're just qualified. I didn't put, uh... Oh, beach sand beach bourbon. Beach sand bourbon. And look at Ooh. that. Thank you. We Hashtag rigged. <laughs> Hashtag rigged. <laughs> Yeah. So many rigs. You know, on my on my laptop, it the wheel's still spinning and it landed on me. Wow, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Your laptop lies. <laughs> the liar. So I'm gonna say something real quick. Um, my wife is out of town, so I'm home alone. And in the mail today came this awesome trash pallet sticker. No. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep with it tonight, so I'm not lonely. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Don't make it weird or anything. That that just got really weird. <laughs> We're all here for. We weird, got though. one more. Yeah, exactly. We got another person Whiskey here. Whiskey rock rocks. Sacks. It was hey, what's up, guys? See you last time. Thanks for Zach, joining cheers. us again. Thanks for joining us again. Cheers, guys. Yeah. You got a few bottles on that on that. Sh bar behind you there are crazy uh, there oh uh, well yeah we got about 500 total down here so may as well make use of them <laughs> wow nice. nice between that and my wife's wine down here who knows oh, and the your, concert t-shirt a, a <laughs> i won't call it a collection she's just just been uh pregnant for like the past I'll say a year and a half for the most part, and she had a wine membership that she got Bro, two you're bottles every only month. Pregnant for nine months. I don't know what. Yeah, going on well, number that. two. <laughs> number two helps. Not, not I was going to say that. There is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a long. That's a long pregnancy. Jeez. That is a well done yeah. baby. <laughs> two under two is going to be interesting for a couple months yet. <laughs> Talk about bun in the oven. You need to crank that up from two fifty to three fifty and get that thing done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're what due uh, early August now. So, oh well, congratulations. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, Beach Sand Bourbon, if you didn't see that Tipsy Whiskey shenanigans, make sure you email him so he can yes. uh, get I, that Glenn to you. I've, I've got well. your contact information. I can forward it to Steven. Yeah, or yeah, forward it to me. Yeah, too. sorry, that also yeah, works. We can do that too. I'm over here making shit guess... complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's super easy. I, I've got his contact info. I will, I will get it to you tomorrow. There you go. Yeah, that works. Awesome. Yeah. 
Well, hey, sure I'm going to jump off out. here. I still have some people hanging Thanks, out. Shane. I love you guys. Thanks for, like, good, you know, saying see my you, name. Shane. Beetleju Beetlejuicing yeah, me on your stream Beetlejuice, or whatever Beetlejuice, it was. Beetlejuice. It, it happens every week. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Hey, have let's hang out soon, you. Bakers. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Love you guys. Love everybody in chat. We'll see you. you. Bye. <laughs> So I've got a funny story from today, if um, you guys don't mind me sharing it. Yeah, go, go, ahead. Right ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Do you know how we're always complaining or people complain that whiskey is too expensive and the stores mark it up tremendously? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me let the dog out. Hold <laughs> on. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, Okay, while he's letting the dog out, Rusty, is that cat real? It's it's got such a white line around it. I can't tell if it's like AI or if it's a real cat. Yes, this is real a, this is asshole. <laughs> Do you is see that AI? though? It looks like it's AI. <laughs> Rust, Rusty, where's Judy tonight? She's sleeping. She's got to get up early. Okay, so no, so no bitch switch tonight. No, no. <laughs> if you guys miss it, I can, I can call her and get her up. I mean, if you, you, you really want to so, see it. So Stephen Rusty's wife Judy will sit just off screen with a yardstick, <laughs> and she will smack him throughout the show. <laughs> I'm pro this what? level of violence. I love that. <laughs> it's it's good comedy for us. We enjoy it as well. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm subscribed now. I'm looking forward to watching some videos. There you go. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Weird off ones track, on. Syndicate, um, before he did his sober month now, um, he had some great reviews where he was sitting in front of the city hall doing a review and the he, he like sets of whiskey up a card or table. just reviews of life <laughs> no, whiskey. He, whiskey he sets up a card table in front of city hall at noon on a sunday and pours a flight <laughs> then he does it again like uh, on the overpass on, on the, the alabama georgia state line <laughs> <laughs> anyone everyone stopped you yet rusty or did they just like look at you like what the heck's he doing <laughs> i got i got strange looks <laughs> I don't think anyone would actually stop you. Everyone's going to judge you a whole hell of a lot, but no, no, oh, yeah. no one's going to stop you. you. You do you, boo boo. Right? Look at this guy on the side of the road drinking whiskey. Yeah. Did we get the story? <laughs> Did we get the story from Delan? He, he likes no, yeah, to talk and he had to let his Sunday. dog out. Okay. I want to hear the story. story. Your dog's out. Let's hear it. All right. So. At some point in time, maybe this summer, Beach Sand Bourbon and myself are going to go and do some hunting together in my area when he comes here. So I was out today checking out new stores, trying to build relationships. And I went into this store, never been into it before, follow them, follow them on Instagram, and I see some bottles of Still Austin. Well, the prices are five to ten dollars cheaper than total wine. And I kind of use total wine as my basis of what prices should be. So I buy the bottles, talk, I talk to the guys for a while, go outside, pull up total wine, check the prices, and I was like, holy crap, they're like really cheap. So me trying to be the nice guy I am, I go back into the store and I'm like, hey man, you guys are selling these bottles too cheap. What? <laughs> what? Why? And every, everybody in the whiskey world instantly hates to land. Yeah. <laughs> so Did they you told me beforehand. <laughs> and, and I bought them beforehand. Yes, I paid for them first. I wasn't walking there out there. <laughs> But I'm trying to build these relationships. So I show them Total Wine's prices and their prices. And they're like, look, Total Wine must mark them up. He goes, we sell them at state minimum, maybe $5 more, but that's it. And he goes, are you really complaining that the price is too low? And I'm like, no, 
I don't want to see you guys like lose money. You know, I want to come back. So later on that day, they actually sent me a message on Instagram thanking me for being so honest about the price. And um, it was just, it, it was something I did. I don't know. I just, maybe it was stupid. Did they raised the price afterwards. They did not. They did okay. not. <laughs> That's good on that. How much were they? So, um, the still Austin musician was like $45 and that's over 50 at total wine and the cast strength, um, was just under 50. It was only like a $5 Ooh. difference between the musician and the cast strength. Yeah. They should be nice. like 40, 50 bucks. So the, yeah. the normal one's 40, the cast strength's like 50 bucks in my area. Yep, and Total Wine has them, I think, around 50 and 60 or a little bit higher than that. Never should have gone so, back. So Total Wine uh, does upcharge. And then, like, for us, we live in Washington, they upcharge even more than they do in every other state um, because there's a tax on distribution as well. So they, they uh, it's a higher base price than every other state and then we pay more tax on top of that so it's like a double tax it's it's real fun um but yeah uh, Washington they, just they, does they not do, want you to enjoy whiskey they do no, upcharge they, washington's awful but um i mean obviously we we still go to total wine because it's convenient and they have a lot of stuff and we have been very lucky with uh winning their lotteries so last year I mean, we've won. Um, that's where we get all our tater bottles. We won our. Uh, we've won eight in a row. Um, Barrel proof. Um, e. H. Taylor. Uh, George T. Stag. A uh, William Lou Weller. Uh, birthday bourbon. Birthday bourbon. I mean, we've been Angels very envy casks. Right? Very lucky with their lotteries, mm. so we keep shopping there because we end up getting some good bottles. But they do upcharge a bit. Well, I, I'm looking at building those relationships because bourbon in stores is all about relationships. There's a story around my house that I go to quite often, you know, where they'll give me the bottles that they have priced stupid, you know, maybe $10 over um, MSRP just because I go there and I conversate with them so much. And I was just looking at the same thing here, but I did buy two cool bottles this weekend. For me, they were cool. One was a uh, Belconi's um, single malt that was bottled in 2018. And um, another one is a Redwood Empire. I don't know much about it, but it says it was bottled in 2017. So if anybody knows about those, I'd love to hear about it. What? what Just what Redwood Empire? Yeah, hold on a second. I'll grab it. It must be from their newer releases. Let me see Matt's latest comment. Inspector Gadget Vape. Fruit Loops. <laughs> Rusty, are you following the chat? <laughs> oh, I've never seen that bottle before. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you big. Hold on. Keep it keep it there. Yeah. I gotta see this better. Red oh, American? the American whiskey oh, they did. Yeah. It's been a while. An American whiskey. That must That's be like awesome. an old variation of the uh, Lost Monarch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, Lost Monarch. I don't know. The Brian. It's, it's that makes ninety sense. proof. Yeah. Ninety proof. It says batch one, and it was bottled at eleven nine seventeen. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, that must be an old ass pipe dream, Burai, right? Or yes. Lost Monarch. Yeah. Lost Monarch. Well, yes. Burai. Sorry, I'm a little intoxicated. What well, you said the first time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah but what, what I meant to say the second time. <laughs> Whiskey wisdom. This is a geek vape, and uh, it's not a tube. I, I'm charging it because the battery just about died on me. Oh. It looks like you got some weird you. hookah going. Yeah, right? it's like a it's a vape hookah. <laughs> don't worry about it. It don't mean nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Big cat, what you drinking tonight? Uh, just some old granddad 114 right now. Just some OGD nice. 114. You never start yes, a sentence with just. 
You say an right. OGD one fourteen. It's my it's my go to cheap bottle, you know. Yep. Twenty twenty five bucks. Good Great. stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. The dealer of the Northwest. Good night, Ben. Who's the dealer oh, of the he's Northwest? Meeting Lee. He's meeting Lee. Oh, Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah that sounds nice. Lee, Lee Enjoy was. Enjoy your time. Lee was in the chat from Connecticut earlier. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I think he's. That's north. Yeah. Northeast. I, I thought Marvin said he was coming home on the twentieth, but it's the twenty third. Today is the twenty third. Yeah. And he said from Connecticut. Yeah, I don't know. What he's Not home yet. At. It'll be a while. He's taking his time. That's okay. Yep. So Zach, what are you drinking now? I am currently drinking some well special reserve. Okay. And Delan, what you got? Um, I am drinking the uh, still Austin cast strength. Okay. Is so, that the one you just picked up? I picked up an extra. I have one that's oh, okay. been opened. Nice. So I ten dollars cheaper may as well. Cast cask strength Peralta to the media sample Peralta. Oh, you're, you're huge change. It's that not, was a huge no, mistake. It's not as good, yes. <laughs> but you I, 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 I have to, Unicorn to standard offering doesn't translate. Yeah, I, I had to share it with Laura. I couldn't just drink it all. And she was slow, so I like poured the whole sample of the regular Peralta in my glass. Yeah, I don't need anymore. I'm good. <laughs> but thanks for sharing. Yeah. That's very nice of you. And she just put the the unicorn in her glass. So it smells she, real nice. So she's about to be real impressed, and I'm just disappointed. Oh. Yeah, that's not the way I would have taken it. <laughs> Is this finished? It's not finished. Nope. No, it's just yeah. It's uh, mash bill is going to be sixty percent corn, thirty or fifty percent of that. Jeez, Louise. This is why I don't brand ambassador when I'm drunk. Uh, 60% of it is going to be corn. Uh, yeah, 60%. 50% of that 60% is yellow corn. The other 50 is blue corn. And then it's 35% malt and then 5% rye. And then that malt, 2% of said malt is going to be chocolate malt, which is basically like a very roasted malt. And that's where that chocolate espresso mocha thing's coming from, as well as the four years of being an oak in uh, the Phoenix metropolitan area is going to hit you pretty freaking hard. And how many, how many bottles were that's made so of good. this? This specific batch, I could not tell you off the top of my head, but I think it was somewhere around like 60 to 70, which is about like 30 to 40 bottles less than we typically would see from a cash strength. Release. Yes, it is so freaking good. Wow, that is, it's so unique. It's like, I can't believe that it's only 2% two, 2 of the 35% or is it 2% total for the Ooh. chocolate? You see, yeah, so it's it's two percent. Well, yeah, two percent in total of the mash bill. So okay, of that thirty five percent, so thirty three is either way. It's pretty malt. small. Yeah. It's it seems like it's got a lot of uh, influence on the flavor in we, a good way. We have so I'll send you two more um, samples that are like outside of the samples. I'll send you for the live stream moving forward. But we have a. Oh, what am I trying to say? So instead of being 2%, we did one that was 20% of the malt was chocolate malt. And that one is uh, wild. I mean, that that's what we do. That's fun. It's uh, experimenting with the mash bill. You know how a lot of distilleries with your exploratory stuff, they they try out new things that they're not comfortable with because just blending barrels at some point gets boring. So it's like, hey, maybe we're going to smoke something. Hey, maybe we're going to, you know release something at a higher proof, lower proof, different ages, uh, things of that nature. We experiment with the mash bills because we're, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you why we experiment with those. That's just the passion of the mash that are distiller, but it's makes us very unique. So I'll yeah, say that takes a while with the different mash bill too. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's harder to R and D that way as well, yeah. but 
Time for maturation is questionable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe because they they don't have to age as long there as like other mm -hmm. places because it's so hot. It's hot. The impact's not the same though, because it's aging it's whiskey. Not like Texas. It's not necessarily just oh, it's it, it's not all of Arizona is this way. But where we're in is the Phoenix metropolitan area. It's a huge freaking city. The heat we build up, especially in our warehouse, is it's insane. We cannot age something more than four years. Because at four years, we almost lost all of the whiskey. It, it's, oh I mean, the what, what you're drinking is, in my opinion, borderline a little bit too much oak. So... It's also high proof, so it's kind of hard to like control that. But um, yeah, we lose out on the oxidization though because you can't like the the interaction of the molecules inside the whiskey. And this isn't coming from some sort of chemist. This is a drunk idiot. But uh, the interaction of the molecules with the air and stuff like that does open up a lot of flavor particles whatever you want to call them um inside the whiskey that that just takes time and interaction with the air inside the barrel and all that jazz but you don't get that when you're in the southwest you get a lot of heat and you get a lot of losing whiskey because the whiskey either gets pushed out of the barrel the barrel uh or it evaporates out like the the amount of stains on our rick houses or rick house racks whatever you want to call them uh, from like the molasses -y whiskey that's pushed out of the barrel. Cause I know it's not like sap or molasses or anything like that, but the whiskey getting pushed out of the barrel and it like kind of solidifies. It doesn't taste good by the way. It tastes like shit, uh, which is very <laughs> unfortunate, but um, like it's, it's insane. We lose things so quick. Arizona is not yeah. the right place to be aging whiskey, but the lack of humidity definitely how is questionable for you. Yeah. How cold does it get in the winter there? Um, it gets pretty great. Um, it's like um, you know, like I don't think it dropped below forty or fifty this year. We can go oh, to like uh, so so where I'm at, I'm I'm in Mesa, which is basically like it's a subsidiary of the Phoenix area, uh, and Tempe ASU, like that's where the distillery is at, uh, but we don't get really cold but there's places in northern arizona that do get really cold because the deserts it's very mountainy so it's yeah. you put a city on top of a mountain it's going to be cold up there so there's that's the one thing i love about living in arizona i've lived a lot of places uh places i wish i never experienced and places i would love to go back to but arizona is pretty great outside of the summer um just because you can go places to experience different things like snow and whatnot, but it's also not like, Hey, it's brutally cold outside constantly. Like some of y'all are experiencing right now. <laughs> so Steven, um, I'm going to be in Flagstaff in May. Do you mind if I send you a message to get some um, clarification on some good bourbons to buy while I'm down there? I, yeah, no, no, not at all. I would, let's meet up, dog. I'll go up to Flagstaff. I will literally drive up to Flagstaff same day just to hang out, get drunk, buy some bourbon, and then go back down. As long as I'm all right, free. I'll, I'll get a hold of you. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going down there for a meet and greet because my son asked his um, fiance now to marry him. So it's going to be kind of a long weekend. Um, we're going down to meet her parents. So... Awkward. We'll see what um how much time I have because it's the wife is dictating this one. The, oh, the yeah. importance is meeting the parents. Everything else is secondary. But yeah, yeah, I haven't done much hunting in Flagstaff, but uh, I do plan on going up there soon because we're getting in that camping season now where it's it's too damn hot in where I live. But if I travel two hours, I can stay night like overnight and whatnot. And it's not too cold either. So, like, that's 
pretty much my plans moving forward. And my camera just died. Love that for me. I'll be back, guys. <laughs> At least your microphone still works. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know you got to keep the separate system separate. I think Rusty's cat stepped on his cord. What stepped on something? I said I What's think Rusty's. Yeah. That was asshole. Asshole. Yes, yeah. asshole. Is that really its name? Yes. Oh, shoot. <laughs> challenge. Cheers to you. Oh, Randy, my gosh. Randy's in the house. Dave says they got six inches of snow yesterday. Gross. I don't think we got six inches of snow this year, and I'm okay with that. Hey. That's too much. It's too much. Better. I'd better. like for it just to get cold to kill the bugs. Sounds Sorry, better. I would rather... Better you rather have me. six inches of snow than a quarter inch of ice. Yeah, Correct. we did get ice. We did get freezing rain a couple times. That sucked. Yeah. I just wish it got cold for two weeks to make sure the bugs would be in check over the summer. Cheers, Tiller. Randy, jump on with us. We haven't seen you in a while. <clears throat> and and Jeff, I'm going to send your Jeff Castle. You're in the chat there. I'm going to send your contact information to Dave Vogel saying, if that's not okay, let me know. But uh, he's asked for your information. It's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it means you probably get something. <laughs> Could be good. If you don't want, if you don't want it, let me know. I'll take it instead. <laughs> Six to eight inches of beach sand bourbon. That does not sound like beach or sand <laughs> to get six to eight inches of so, snow. So FYI, Wrong name. <laughs> FYI, we had a lot of super chats tonight. We got no emails. I need to know who to send these stickers to, guys. Giant trash pallet sticker. If you super chatted, I got to send you a sticker. Email us, please. Deland's got it right there. He's sleeping with it tonight. How awesome is that sticker, Deland? <laughs> you know, it's awesome. And what's even more awesome is that it's personalized. There you go. So, in about 15 years, I'm going to put my sticker on eBay and get $3.2 million for it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be worth that for sure. I expect a full Invested. review of how sleeping with that sticker goes. <laughs> I'm thinking it's gonna be the marketplace. <laughs> I'm thinking it may turn into a sticky situation. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. <laughs> See, Canadian Chris doesn't even have snow. He doesn't live in an igloo. There's no snow. It's not ice cold up in Canada. Is he really Canadian? And he's got no snow. Fake no Canadian. Igloos. Doesn't exist. Not real. I need to at least send moves to verify. So Matt, you want one? You haven't sent one. Check yet? check your mail, buddy. I sent it at the <laughs> same time I sent the lands. I got mine. Boom. I'm guessing Nicole has your sticker, and she just hasn't given it to you yet. <laughs> You got you got it, Rusty. Yeah, I got mine. So, Rusty, you won last week's super chat, the Irish flight. Did you get that yet? Uh, no. I, well, I don't think so. I have to His check. His wife got it. I don't think so. His let, wife got well, it. Let me check. Let me check my pirate ship and make sure yeah, that it's go. been yeah. delivered. I bet his wife got it. It's it's. it's I was going to say, Judy may have. Of sobriety is over. Judy may have it in customs holding right now. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. No, it, it does say in transit. It's not even close. It's not even close. Well, we're like in Nebraska. It, it'll be there in the next day or two, Rusty. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I wanted to jump on that night. Deland, he messaged me. He says, man, you won, you won. I was in the middle, right in the middle of installing a, a new dishwasher and refrigerator. He was, I was asleep. Guys, and then I 
got busy uh, and wasn't paying attention. You're not installing appliances at midnight. You were asleep. It's oh, no, okay. it's we all were. Good. No, 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 we were. We were, absolutely. Gandy Road says, I got one as well, but he's not going to sleep with it. <laughs> well, you're missing out. <laughs> Um, Stephen, I, uh, in the private chat here in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, stream yard, I put the link for war horse legacy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I show yeah. I'm always trying to find veteran dis or geez, I'm pretty drunk at this point. Uh, mixing things up, uh, veteran, like, uh, 501 C three charities and stuff to support and things of that nature. Uh, that's another thing you guys asked some questions that I didn't actually have answers, but one thing I do want to do is I want to start doing more veteran related donations through the channel, like doing a lot of, Hey, like we'll do a giveaway and then donating the proceeds to charity. I want to start doing that once a month, but I just haven't quite got around to like getting that concept off of its feet. But we'll get there. That's that's on the plan. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. It's a step. I'm gonna yeah. solo we'll get there. us for just a second. Hey, Matt. I don't know if you can see this right here. That's you. <laughs> that's you, Matt, on that milk carton right there on a sticker behind Troy. He's got some. He made extra stickers just for you. Have you seen me? <laughs> That's milk carton, Matt. That's awesome. <laughs> He's been missing for a while. Yep. So, so Tater Dom, I see you. You won one of our giant stickers last week. Email us, buddy. So we have your address. We we don't know where to send it to. Just send us an email this.baker.drinks Th throw, throw it up in there okay i'll throw it up in there and you email us we'll send it to you so uh right there it's at the bottom of the screen this.baker.drinks at gmail.com you guys made it complicated with this extra this dot it's because it's there was already a baker drinks there was a this baker drinks there was i mean it was hard to create an email i was like what the heck this is not that com i shouldn't it shouldn't be that common yeah i don't know and, and anybody <laughs> watching 32 of you right now if you want so here's the size difference right the big guy is the one i'm giving out with the super chats the little guy it's free email me this dot baker drinks at gmail.com i will send this little guy to you for free email us yep there you go that's it that's it stickers <laughs> matt says this that's tater's thing he wins never gives his info RJ's been looking for it. Got some free stuff to give him. Can't give to him because nobody knows his info. Thank you, Beach Sand Bourbon. Throwing that up again. Tater Dom's probably like living in some mansion in like Peru or something. And he's like, fuck these Americans. They're not going to send it to me. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, look at, look at that hair. The dude's amazing. Do you think that's his picture? Oh yes, that's totally his picture. It it used to be, it was a different picture, but equally awesome hair. It it was awesome. It's it's always awesome. The I, thing I is, feel like it's not him. Tater wins so much. He's just like I don't have room because everywhere you look, he's winning something. Yeah. So it's like he probably doesn't need to ever buy bourbon if he just starts breaking into the samples and everything he wins. Tater Dom wins everywhere because he's supporting everybody. I think he's on Whiskey Tube every night. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for a better supporter. The yep. guy is on every live stream, he's commenting, he's dropping links. Uh, yep, yeah, I agree. I love how earlier Steven said, "I can't talk because I'm drunk." No, no, I, no. When you're when you're no longer talking and you're passed out like that's this, that's when you're drunk. 
When we see the top of your head, then we yeah, know you're drunk. I've puked. I will 100% be puking before I hit that point. <clears throat> that's oh, not wow. a good look. We have not done that yet. We don't need to get yeah, there. Yeah, I don't want to see you puking on the screen. <laughs> yeah. No. Get a bucket. <laughs> Someone get up a bucket. <laughs> I mean, if you want your views to go up, yeah, I'm yeah, just saying. Self-inflict pain. <laughs> All right, we're we're reaching behind the curtain for refills. Ooh. What do you got, Green River? We got some Green River, just the straight bourbon, Kentucky straight bourbon. Nice. Ninety, I don't, 90 I don't proof need a refill. I'm still working. You're you still got a glass and a half over there. I'm I'm good. I'm a much slower drinker than you. Turns out. That, it turns the, uh, out. the Green River She's... Green River single barrel was absolutely fantastic. I yeah, we got one awesome. coming in the mail. Oh, so we have so the good. Green River weeded. No, I don't. We may have we, a sample. We, we, we do not. Sample? No, we don't have anything. We don't even have a sample. No. As far as Green River goes, we just have the the straight bourbon whiskey. Was that? A I yawn think the weeded. Are you tired? <laughs> I am. My schedule is a nightmare now because I work at four a.m. Because I technically oh. work on uh, East Coast time, even though Arizona is now West Coast time. So, yeah, even on like the so, weekends, it's like by the time we hit like almost nine o'clock, I'm like, all right, guys. Like, I know we just like got to the like club and we started going out and drinking and whatnot, but like. I have to go home. It's bedtime. Good night. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's rough. We I used to so actually Troy and I met, we used to work together um at a at a job, a nursing job and dialysis. And it was 5 a.m. was the start time of the shift. Yeah. And that was rough. That was uh, I mean, that was rough. And he, or actually, I think when we first met, he was working evening shift at that job and I was working the day shift. So I started at five and he worked till like 11, 11. or something. And so we'd hang out and I'm like, I got to go to work in like three hours. I need some sleep. <laughs> he's like, I just got off work. I'm like, no, I need some sleep. <laughs> like, what, what are you, a wimp? <laughs> We're partying. Yeah, I, no, it was, it was a, a bad situation. <laughs> I mean, I think anytime you work at that early in the morning, it was like, it was either nap in the afternoon or go to bed at like eight. It was one of the two. There were there was no like normal life there. Yeah. The only nice so, thing is getting off at like one, two o'clock ish. Yeah. Like you're like, hey, dude, I can still do so much shit with my life after work that you don't typically have the availability to do. Like I can still do chores. I can still take my car and do all this shit. That normally you're just like, if you work as nine to five, you're like, hey, that's not happening. Like, I don't know where I'm going to squeeze it in. So it's, yeah, I it was a nine hour shift. So I worked five to two thirty in the afternoon. And I either, if I took a nap, it was still like, okay, I took a nap and now it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. I still got all evening. <laughs> that is no big deal. Or I'd get off at two thirty start to do things so it was it, it worked out but that's not my schedule anymore now i gotta work all day yeah. i don't like that randy here's randy you got a hey. tv on or something randy you're um, you're very loud i don't know Laura. Is that better? You got, you got a speaker on. <laughs> I don't know. Away. You got a speaker on instead of your headphone. <laughs> That's better. Right? That's better, Randy. Uh, How you doing, buddy? Let's see. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we I, can I, hear, I hear you. That better. We, I just, just I can, we can just hear other noise. I was just. But yeah, we oh, can okay. hear. <laughs> we'll have my phone going at the same time. I'm listening to broadcast off my phone before I turn on the oh, camera. Oh, that's probably what over it is. Here. <laughs> How, how you doing, uh, buddy? Yeah, so how things going, everybody? Uh, yeah, I've been watching uh, all your broadcasts every week. Uh, I really comment. I liked everything and uh, watched all the way to watching them play all the way to the national championship. Thinking about you. Uh, now we got your coach. 
Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got your coat. Yeah, you got a coat. Uh, look at that jab. Close the jab that. right in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then today yeah, we drove past Heflin and I thought about Rusty. <laughs> I was probably up go. on the bridge yeah. when you went by. Yeah, yeah. we uh <laughs> Uh, maybe so. Today was the allocation day in Alabama. And yeah, I, I didn't did you get anything at the drop? So, uh, so me and Richard decided instead of standing in line to see if we get drawn or anything, we just drive over to Georgia, buy Mega Millions tickets, which is up to one point one billion, and we hit a uh, liquor store over there while we're over there. There you go. What, what'd you pick up? Uh, Richard bought, well, I bought a, uh, let's see, where's it at? A 13th colony. It's just a regular 13th colony. Pad. Okay. Uh, they didn't have the 15th year or the double oak. Uh, Richard <laughs> bought the, uh, a store pick of the, uh, blue note. And he got the, uh, the, the Fiddler Georgia Hartwood also. So, you know, we were happy with that, you know. Nice. And, uh, you must, eventually, we'll do shows about all three of those. You know, you must do. Uh, you must Georgia Hartwood is amazing. Yeah, that stuff's really good. Did you go to Carrollton Beverage? Yeah. Not Carrollton. When you get off the interstate up there in twenty, we went to the left instead of the right, which is uh, I can't even remember the name of the the city. Uh, to, uh, uh, sounds like uh, you Cannon. get off. You know what I'm talking about, Rusty? Yeah. Yep. Yes, Buchanan Beverage is where we went. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, went in there. They're real nice. Uh, Richard asked him about the uh, the uh, Blue Note uh, store pick they had, and they gave us samples, and we tried that, and it was real good. You know, it's like 120 proof. Yeah. And, uh, so he he decided to buy a bottle of that, and they had one bottle of the Georgia Hartwood. And he's like, 120 bucks. I'm buying it. So he bought that. And then the third thing colony was the other Georgia thing that we obviously can't, we can't get here in Alabama. So right. I thought, well, it's just a regular one, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. You know, there were there were several things I wanted to get, but you know, I, I didn't want to sit there and blow two, three hundred dollars on stuff that I didn't really need. Because you know? the the Alabama uh, allocation that they had today, most of the stuff I already got that they had, and so there wasn't no point in waiting in line. In it. Yeah. Did you go today, Russ? No, I didn't. I didn't get picked, and I just, I said I ain't gonna, because everything, everything would have been gone by the time it. I could have got anything in the walk-up line anyway. Yeah. So I was like, nah. Same here too. So especially here in Birmingham. I mean, everybody crowds to the Birmingham area. So yeah, I would have had to drive to Tuscaloosa or somewhere to get anything, you know. But, but anyway, I'm. <clears throat> Got that. I'm happy with it. But right now I'm drinking uh I'm drinking beer instead, you know. <laughs> what kind of beer oh is God. that? I don't think I've ever seen one of those. That well no, that's just that's just a no, no, this is, is England, Dixie? England beer. Yeah. This is just my uh my Yeti I got with my sticker on it there. Oh, oh, that's, that's awesome. That's why I didn't recognize it. I was like, yeah. this is a little good beer routine. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We, got, we don't have place. our own beer yet. I'd like to want it. If I win the uh, lotto, we'll have our one beer and one bourbon one day. <laughs> there you go. One one bourbon, one beer. Maybe with one, scotch. One bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. <laughs> hey, Gandy. How are you? What's up, Gandy? Bro? Gandy. <laughs> exactly. How's everybody doing? Good. Yes, sir. All right. Popcorn good. all over the desk here, Troy. You sprinkle <laughs> popcorn everywhere. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm heading out. Thank you guys so much for inviting me on tonight. Uh, cheers, y'all. We'll see you later. Thank you for joining us, Steven. Cheers. 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 Good night. Cheers. We'll see you Have later. Nice meeting you, Stephen. I subscribe to your YouTube channel. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, hit me up. Hit me up about Flagstaff. I'll be sure to do some stuff about it. Uh, see y'all later. Yep. Sweet. If we can meet up, we'll try and meet up. Yes. I'd love that.
Take care.